There's no time. Hey, everybody. And we are here. Look, I have blue hair. (laughs) Well, like I said, the reason that we're doing the show earlier is because we're going to Mannequin's Vampire Ball later. Mm -hmm. And so I was just kind of like, well, not going to have too much time after the show to get my shit together and put makeup on and wigs and whatnot. So I'm going to do as much of it as possible beforehand. Yeah. So then after the show, I can just change clothes, slap on some fake nails, put on my headdress and run out the door. I'm pretty much ready. Well, you're a dude. Yeah. Everything's easy for you guys. Yeah, I you my, don't. I got my boots. Like on. he's put his clothes on. It's like ten minutes got later. He's like, on. I'm ready. Got my bondage pants on. <laughs> so legit. Just got a zipper right here. You can zip it, and if it just flies out, <laughs> it flies. Out. Yeah, ready for dominate. <laughs> ready to dominate. <laughs> just dominate the hell out of these bitches. Is that what you're doing? I guess so. I don't know what it is. Just let me fantasize. <laughs> let me fucking fantasize. Get ready to go to the fucking club. All right. <laughs> Well, maybe, later. Maybe Doctor Michael be there in several hours. Maybe, maybe Doctor Michael fucking be there. He'll rub on my nipples. I'll fucking draw down on him <laughs> like that. He's a nipple rubber. He's a nipple rubber. He's a nipple rubbing vet, uh, uh, veterinarian. He is, yeah. He's a he's, nip- ooh, looks like riffraff. <laughs> looks like riffraff from fucking. He looks like riffraff from, from Rocky fucking Horror. Yeah. Rocky Horror and shit. DJ Maniac says, "Is this an official vampire ball? Is Father Father Sebastian in town? No, it's no, not an I- official one. It's just." Um, we've been to a couple of those we'll set that in up. Tampa, yeah. but yeah, um, mannequins, he just, he wanted to do one, I guess. Like yeah. the Tom that, that runs mannequins is like, well, fuck yeah. it. I'm going to do one too. I only just found out about it like a week ago. Right. And I was like, well, shit. Cause they, they were talking to us like last uh, weekend and they're like, it's Friday night. You guys have to come. So I was like, okay. So we're just like maneuvering the show around. Yeah. Cause you know how long it takes me to get ready for this shit. So I had to yeah, like. Your cleavage looks fantastic on camera. Does it? Yeah. Okay. This get... isn't even, this isn't my final form. This is not, yeah. this is not the shirt that I'm wearing. I just wore this one because it's yeah. easy to take off from the front and I don't have to pull yeah. it off over my head and fuck my wig up. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> Those injections, man. The fucking the cleavage is calling me. I'm going to try to get in there. <laughs> but here's the deal. He's no, going to be climbing into the like, cleavage. In between the cleavage. <laughs> <laughs> They're already Kevin sending money this way. What is that super? Yeah. Thing? Thank see. you, Ken. I can't see that for Ken? some drinks because you look fucking amazing. Oh, thank you. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank you very much. You should much. see what I, I just bought her some some new stuff too. Yeah, right? he was just showing me. Before. I got her like a Marilyn Monroe style dress. You know, with the halter, it's like a halter dress. Yeah. It's fucking red, bright red PVC. It's gonna look good. It's cool Clean looking. Fucking at the bottom. Just got to get her the right fucking bra to go with it because it's got a real low back. You gotta yeah, figure out. Somebody have one of those little glue on things. It just glues up there. I mean, you got implants. I mean, I just let the fuckers swing. You know, I don't understand why you get just you. Is that when you bend over like that and you just kind of like <laughs> spill out? It's like porn. Well, it well like, other people. These fuckers look great. I don't know why she's worried about it. No, it's not so much the way they look. It's um, it's what they feel like. Oh, okay, they you know what like I mean. Fall it, out? It's uncomfortable. Oh, like, right. You know what I mean? No, not really. I've never had boobs. Yeah, so. I've just seen them on other people. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's your problem right there. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, no. Nah, sort of, <laughs> That's what I mean. It's just like, it's really funny because... Yeah. It's like the dress and he was showing me and I was just like, man, that's really awesome. But immediately I'm like, okay, um, what kind of dress am I going to wear with this? Can I do this? Can I do that? Do it? Can I do the other thing? Can I wear a corset under that? No. Can I wear a corset over it? Maybe. And that's like, you know what I mean? I have to make all these calculations. No, I'm going to get you a new waist center for that. A real low, narrow waist center to go in there. It'll look great underneath there. Wouldn't Pepper says, are you... The per- back's real low. You yeah. can't wear a normal corset with that. You can't wear a bra with it either. Yeah. Unless it's no. clear. And even then. Right. I've seen like those clear ones in there. Right. Hey. A lot of that stuff was kind of intended for like a 110, 120 pound girl with some serious bolt-ons. Yeah. Where she's got her own support or she's kind of flat. Uh, you know, if you got big fucking boobs, even, you know... Even implants, they're, they're going to move around. Well, there's only a very small, narrow window of clothing that actually looks good on me. I don't think so. That's your, that's your <laughs> I think a lot of stuff looks good on you. You're just, you're just too hard on yourself. You're a woman. You're seeing it. That's through, just kind of our thing, man. You're seeing it through the eyes of a woman, not the eyes of a man. man men are a lot more forgiving and they're into, we're into weird shit. 
<laughs> See, she's got the sidewall boobs. It's the sidewall. Well, yeah, I know all that. There's those. all that kind of shit, boobs. you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, you know the woman is well built if you can see the boobs from the back. <laughs> yeah, you're like behind her. And the arm moves forward. And oh, you're going, my oh God. shit. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Pepper said, are you pretending to be vampires or is it just a gothy scene event? Kind of one of the other. Some yeah, people yeah. get really into it and they wear yeah. the fangs and everything, yeah. but it's like, I'm not doing that. I'm just wearing shit that I would normally wear. But, it's just you know, a goth night. It's just a theme. Yeah. Usually it has an 18 or 1700s theme. I got all that shit, but my 1700s and 1800s stuff is fucking so thick and so heavy you can't wear it. Before. Yeah, it's like a million degrees outside. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not wearing all that stuff. I could go full on Lestat. I yeah, got he's got he's got, got like the neck things yeah, and all that shit. I got fucking like five or six jackets from that period, different collar lengths. Some yeah, I got some like velvet. I have sea shit. captains and shit. Fucking, I got all kinds of neat stuff like that. But it just it's just too hot here. It's mostly too hot to be able to it's wear velvet it. Velvet and wool and yeah, it's kind of a bummer. Yeah, it's a we get very excited just during the one day in the yeah. winter when it's cold enough to wear a coat we're like hooray you go like actually yeah. wear some shit so it was sophie was gonna come and she was gonna uh guest with us for a whole uh week uh but she sat we don't know what's going on she's uh having problems at her house she might have to cancel she might have to cancel her flight and everything we don't know yeah yeah it's kind of looking like that. yeah she's got family problems yeah she we'll does we'll but you know going. she's i mean kind of we're hoping that it you know we'll just like delay it a bit yeah or or things might clear up we don't know it's not final yet yeah we'll see how it goes mm -hmm. that's kind of a bummer i was looking forward to her being here yeah pepper said that's because england is cold and rainy as fuck it is i've been there um but yeah florida not so much rainy for sure but uh swampy rainy tropical rainforest rainy you know what i mean yeah so even after it rains it's like oh boy now it's hotter than before yeah <laughs> Actually, in that period, you know, uh, Europeans have been here since the 1400s, uh, or late 1400s, early 1500s. Spain was here a long, long time before. Um, in Spain and France were here a long time before the English were, and uh, they wore that kind of shit here. They, they were crazy. How did they not die? I don't know. And I they didn't know. even have air conditioning. I so no. shit, man. I my grandmother moved down here to Florida from Tennessee in 1958, and her house didn't have air conditioning for years and years. And I'm like. What, how did you live in this fucking shithole without uh -huh. air conditioning? And then she did get air conditioning, and it was just like a, like a window unit. Mississippi Victorians, a lot of them are gone now. But the ones that I grew up with, you know, in the 80s when they were still around, they were multi-floored. Every room had at least three windows. They were narrow, about a foot and a half wide. And they went all the way up to the ceiling. And the ceilings were 10, 12 foot tall ceilings. They were fucking super super tall and with two with two the windows would open up right in the middle like two doors you know yeah so you could open them up you could walk out too so i think they left them open most of the time which meant that the fight place would have been just thick with mosquitoes maybe they had net uh nets or screens i don't yeah, know yeah that's another consideration i can't understand it i mean because before we had you know trucks driving around yeah. spraying pesticide on everything yeah, it's everywhere I'm sure that there was just kind of like, and there was a lot more swamp back here than those yeah. days, around here in those days. And they had wool shit and fucking velvet furniture and everything was fucking hand cut, cut and half handcrafted. And I don't see, it must have just been moldy and mildewy and everything must have just fucking rotted away really quickly. You, I guess you would have had to just constantly replace stuff. Yeah, I mean, seriously. It's like state and butthole down here. I don't understand I, it. I can't understand how they live that like that. <laughs> I don't understand. And then they were taking dumps in pots and just putting that underneath the bed. Save that for later. Yeah, save this. <laughs> they, didn't have any, they didn't have any commodes. That came, that what came later. They just take a oh. dump in a damn pot and put a fucking lid on it. Put it mm. in a damn cupboard. Yeah. I know. Or hand it to a servant. Say throw that away. It's just fucking nuts, man. But they they made it. I just I just think the standards were a lot lower. Well, some of them made used... it. A lot of them yeah. died of horribly pre of preventable diseases. Yeah. <laughs> For exactly those reasons. Now, during all that Ponce de, Le, de, de, Ponce de, de Leon times and shit, during you know Spanish and French explorers that were down in this area, 1500s and 1600s, I think they kind of what you would call in modern part, you know, in 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 the 1800s parlance would be. Uh, I think they went engine. 
You know well, I'm yeah, like because you couldn't walk around in all that fucking armor and all that fucking bullshit that they brought with them from the honky motherland. You'd have to put all that shit up and just walk around. Yeah, like the second I got here, I'd be yeah. like, yeah, fuck this shit. Like, fuck all this shit. <laughs> what are the natives wearing? Yeah, yeah. okay. Give, give me give, that loincloth. Give Come me on. some underwear. And then just walk around and fucking walk right underwear. In it's probably what they did. And then they do you can't, you can't blame them. And they do woodcuts and fucking paintings like they were all in their armor and all that shit. If they wore armor, they wore that shit only when they were going to some kind of a battle. That's when they got fancied up for yeah. the portrait. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like getting dressed up to give out. Zach says, oh my God, Jenny, your hair. Or is yeah. that a wig? Yes, it is a wig. It's a wig, yeah. Um, you know, we're, we're going to the vampire ball after the show. Yeah. So, look, I have look, I have horns also. I know it's not vampire-y, it's more devil-y. But... Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, see. <laughs> no, that's cute. Why are they crooked? Yeah. <laughs> you can't see them. You sort of can. Not on camera. Get Move over this way. Yeah. Your little ram horns. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not messing my hair up. This is exactly what I didn't want to happen. Yes. <laughs> Bees Nest got sexual problems. Don't we all? Yes. <laughs> Back then, the velvet was made of natural fiber like silk. Much easier to bear in hot weather. Yeah, I guess I guess so. Uh, synthetic um, fabrics are kind of a lot harder to deal with. Yeah, but I have a, I have a double-breasted coat from Europe that is real... Um, uh, what do you call it? Real velvet. It was real expensive. I think I got that from Black Rose. It was like 200 something bucks for that jacket back then. I went to Black Rose and in Camden Market when yeah. I was in London. And I used to wear that. Tall. Used to wear that when I went to uh, Man Ray in Boston when, during, when, in the winter when it would snow. And it would be. You could just wear just the velvet jacket and walk through the snow and you're fine. You yeah, didn't need an overcoat. That shit's warm. You got into the club. You got into the club even in the winter time. You just fucking roasted. So I rarely ever wear it. And uh, when you look at it, you could tell that was like some nineteen sixties fucking, uh, fucking Austin Powers fucking cut. It was like it was like something from like something from the sixties. Shagadelic man. Yeah, it's all shagadelic. <laughs> black <laughs> black velvet stuff. Business says I still wear hammer pants, and then DJ Maniac said. Uh, I have hammer horror pants. They're covered in blood. Hammer pants. That's the ones with the crotch went all the way down to the ankle. Pretty much, yeah. About? yeah. Or down past your knees, I feel like. Yeah. Those those were a thing for a that's, minute. That's for so, a minute. That's so nobody would know. Nobody would know that you were wearing a diaper. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what they were for. Yeah, that yeah. was somebody that had to wear depends, and they were embarrassed yeah, yeah, about it. So they pants. so they thought that they would make a whole fashion trend about yeah, it. MC Crapper. <laughs> all right so do we have any kind of shout outs or anything like that before we start this, this uh is we do yeah and i think i mentioned this on the wednesday show but like i said i always like to do them on the main show as well uh we have a new patron named esther so yeah. thank you very much and welcome also wanted to give a shout out to all you other mystery science theater fans out there because i know there are some yeah they have started another kickstarter they're going to essentially they want to do a whole new season and they're going to essentially start their own it's not i don't know if it's necessarily like a streaming service but they're going to start their own thing like where they're going to have their own live events and they're they're starting their own studio like their own virtual studio i guess and they're going to have like live events and shit like that from there and they're going to put all the episodes up on that instead of having to go through netflix because they canceled them so they put up their kickstarter i believe yesterday and their goal was $2 million, and they got it in less than 24 hours. This all goes back. To so that. they're heading toward $3 million. $3.3 million is their next uh, target. This is this is, goes back to what I was telling y'all Wednesday when I was getting drunk, and y'all shut me down saying I talked too much. All right. <laughs> Wait, who said that? I don't know. Somebody in the audience. The talk, <laughs> talk so much it puts you to sleep. I'm like, fuck you, bitch. I'm, I'm shutting this show down. <laughs> shutting this goddamn show He's down. He's so sensitive. But well, I was fucking, I was, I was pretty loaded. <laughs> so it goes back to what I was telling you about. The older a system gets, the more scamified it becomes. The, the, the more in debt it falls into, the higher its overheads, the less of a deal it can get, give you, and the more fucking, the, the more the quality fucking sucks. And it's always replaced by a leaner and meaner system. Just like what happened with punk rock music, okay? With fucking... That's what happened to prog rock. Punk rock happened, and that was the end of prog rock. All right. Uh, it's going to be some shit like that. 
You don't need Netflix. You don't need these big studios. You don't need all these middlemen. And they're fucking panicking. They're fucking panicking. Because they are rich. They got rich generations ago. All right. They feel guilty about how rich they are. I don't think that's I true. I think they say, so. yeah. I think, I think <laughs> that's what all that virtue signaling and everything that they do is about. because they feel fucking guilty. Because uh, for about two or three generations, they've been scamming. Not two or three generations. How many? Two? Probably about two. Depends on who we're talking about, actually. But uh, no, they're scamming and they know they're scamming. So, you know, they're going to fucking... They're going to fucking virtue signal and do anti-racism. You know, of course. What? Well, of course. Because, you know, who, who's not going to get on board with that? And that's free. That's cheap. That's easy. But are they going to adopt real fucking socialism like Bernie Sanders? No. They're going to get rid of him. They're going to get rid of him. They're going to put some corporate fucking hack up there. And then they're going to say, yeah, anti-racism. And they're going to... You know, it ain't. It, it's all a fucking act. It's all an act. They don't believe in anything. All right? Uh I don't believe them and they don't believe it. And all these old rotten institutions and corporations are going to fucking fall, fall apart by lean and mean creators with their own technology. Technology is now democratized. I mean, Jenny just got a damn new phone that can do things that 30 years ago were just undreamed of. I finally got a new she phone. She got a brand new phone. So we'll be able to upload. It's probably some, like five years overdue. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna, we'll be able to upload some shit from the from the club. Put that up on social media. You guys will Hopefully, be able to see. Hopefully, unless we get too drunk to forget. It. Yeah, he'll yeah. he'll he'll take video of me right. throwing up into a grate like that girl yeah. last week. <laughs> no longer takes no longer takes two million dollars of equipment to record fucking ten minutes of fucking footage. You know, it's not like that anymore. So, uh, you know, the old ways are dying. Sandra says, I still don't know what Mystery Science Theater is, even though you talk so much about it. She's in Germany, yeah. Um, oh. It's it's hard to explain. I can explain it. <laughs> Are you going to be shitty? No. Okay. I like Mystery Science Theater. Okay. <laughs> Mystery Science Theater started off as a television program. Back in the early 90s. Actually, right. late 80s. 89 and Late 30, 80s. On you local TV. You can find TV. it by Googling MST3K. That's on. usually what people MST3K. That's what they all call it, MST3K, and it's and it's got a huge fan following. And what it was is it was a show where you watched old B movies. They were terrible. Yeah. But there was a wraparound story behind it about a guy who was trapped in space with his robots, and they're watching these. They're forced to watch these movies. It's an experiment. It's like an experiment. They're trying to drive you're them crazy. You're forced to watch these movies, and you're going to watch these movies along with the little robots. You can see the silhouettes of the little robots' heads down at the bottom of the screen like they're in the movie theater with you. And as this fucking bullshit movie plays out, they're in there making comments about the fucking movie, and it's hilarious. It's delightful. It's very funny. I mean, it's you have to have a particular sense of humor. Yeah. But... <laughs> Here's the problem with it. <laughs> you have to be very knowledgeable and very educated about film, everything. culture... About everything. Every fucking thing. <laughs> Because these little robots and then their little friend and in, in different seasons had a different guy. The comments and the jokes they're making about this B-movie do re obscure fucking references to books written in the 20s or the fucking whatever. You know what I mean? Shit, man. I've, they've even yeah. made some like stuff to, from like ancient Greek plays and yeah, shit ancient, like that. <laughs> if, if you're not... If you're not real well routed, you can check. You can say in the movie, you can go back online and say in this episode, at this mark, why does the robot say this and that? And it'll tell you what they're talking about to explain the joke because some of the shit's real obscure. So Jenny, because she's a nerd, she knows most of the shit. I own that. I sit there and just kind of like giggle and most of it I don't get. Some of it I get. Some of it's real lowbrow humor. Like they start singing. I'll fucking... Yeah, he likes the musical. Oh man, when they start well, singing, I fucking bust up laughing because their 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 musical their musical humor is perfect. It's spot on. It's just so that went on. That program went on for many many seasons. It even ended up on Netflix, and then they even had a multiverse or a, or a, what would you call it? Uh, uh, well, uh, the um, people that branched off from the original. They branched off from there, it. There's cinematic Titanic. There's yeah. riff tracks. Right, riff tracks. Um, 
which is awesome. Rift Tracks is good too. There's a bunch of free ones on yeah. uh, Tubi. Yeah, Rift Track. Rift Tracks is just uh, you get a you can get a you can either watch a whole program and they'll do it live, where they're riffing on a movie. It's the same guys from MST 3K, or sometimes it's just a recording that you press when the movie starts and you hear them commenting over the movie. That yeah, it's be, like it's their own commentary, it's but it's their funny. own commentary. They're trying to get around licensing restrictions and stuff, but it's fucking. But funny. some movies, if they can get the right to it, then yeah. they'll just sell it as a package. Right. They have a whole website. They do like old educational shorts. They do. They've done pretty much any sh movie you can think of. Shitty ones or good ones. Rift Tracks has done it. Yeah. Now is is uh, was the is it still up on Netflix? Uh, the old seasons are there was they yeah. did a season and a half which was MST3K the return yeah um, and that was 12 episodes I want to say it was yeah, nine yeah. episodes or 12 episodes and then they did one that was called MST3K the gauntlet and that yeah. was six episodes and they're good if you don't know the whole history of the show you can start on the Netflix ones but I, I if like you them. see the original ones, I they're, mean, yeah, they're good too. Yeah, I like all of them, yeah. but they all have their different vibes. Because, like yeah. I said, Joel Hodgson is the guy that started it back in the late '80s. He's like a comedian and he's a magician. Yeah. Back in the old days, he used to be on Letterman and stuff. Pardon? And then uh, he was on it for five seasons, and then their head writer Mike Nelson took over. And um, I tend to like Joel is much more like laid back stoner kind of humor. Um, Mike is a lot more acerbic, uh, and I tend to like that better. So I honestly, I think my favorite season is the last one they did on Comedy Central because it was Mike and the original robots. Um, you know, I know that Josh was the original Servo, I know. But um, Mike and the original robots and Dr. Forrester and Frank. Yeah. And that was like only six episodes, but those are probably my favorite ones. I even liked the ones that were on the Sci-Fi Channel. Like seasons eight, nine, and ten. The, the problem is, is that you can't go back in time and watch all the old ones in order very easily, and it would take years to get through them all. Because there are so a, many, so many. Of them. <laughs> so if you're in Germany and you want to know what MST3K is all about, just go on the Netflix version and watch the two seasons that they have there. You'll have a good time. It's a recreation, very high quality recreation of what the show was about. They had to change some things. Like Netflix doesn't have commercials. And the original television program, you had commercials and there were intros and outros to the commercials and there was music playing. And to get that vibe of it being on TV, the Netflix version takes breaks like they're going to do a commercial. But they don't do a commercial. But they never get to but the But they do like a bumper. Just goes like in there, it comes in there, goes back to the thing and to make you feel like you're watching the television. Plus Patton program. Oswalt is on there. A lot of yeah. fucking dudes in costumes dancing. And Felicia Day. Everything has secret meanings. Like, you know. There's a ton of callbacks. Yeah, a bunch, you know, it all has secret meanings to other movies. Like in the new Netflix version, the guys in the background dressed up as the band singing. They're in these skeleton costumes, and they're talking about Inframan. Yeah, that those are the bad Inframan. guys from a crazy. They don't tell you that. But yeah, the crazy they're just ass like, movie. Hey, hey. It's like a little Easter egg. Yeah. Well, the the awesome thing about Mystery Science Theater is pretty much everything is a reference. Yeah. To something else, That's and most chat. of the time. Thank you very much, Moonwalker. Mm -hmm. I have to go back to work now. Tom and Jenny, you guys look hot, and I wish you a fun and great night. Tom, thanks for adding me on Instagram today. Thank you. Thank you. That's from Julie. Thank yep. you very much. That's awesome. Um, if you're like if you're new to MST, I usually recommend, and you know, this is just me. A lot of people will say I'll oh, see one of the older episodes, like one of the classics like Manos or Pod People or something, but I would say go for something. I liked 80s movies, like cheesy 80s movies, and it's a lot more fun for them to make fun of. So I would say uh, Space Mutiny is a good one. Uh, Hobgoblins is a good one because that movie is just like appallingly bad, but like in a really entertaining way. So I would recommend Hobgoblins or Space Mutiny. I'd say just watch the Netflix ones because the, the humor in them is kind of put down, is a little easier because it's not so obscure. Well, the nice Except, thing about it is that there's some highbrow humor, but then yeah. it's like they'll make a joke about like fucking Aristophanes and then yeah. they'll make a poop joke. Yeah, and then they start singing. <laughs> and I just It's all over the map. I just bust up when they start singing because their their their, <laughs> hum, their their musical humor is just perfect. And and it musical humor is emotive. It's about emotion. So I'm more keyed into that. Intellectual humor doesn't uh, doesn't do anything to me. I'm just like, yeah, 
Either I don't understand it or I do understand it, but I don't find it funny. But if somebody slaps somebody else, I'll think that's funny. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's kind of, you know. That's... Some of their jokes are like multi-tiered because yeah. sometimes they'll be referring to, it's kind of hard to yeah. explain, but they'll be referring to some a, a situation in the movie and calling back something else in the movie that they're watching. But they're yeah. also referring back to some other movie that had like a similar situation or something like that. So you kind of have to know like yeah. a couple degrees back, like what yeah. they're talking about. Well, she's in Germany and I don't know if she's a native English speaker. That's why I was saying go to the Netflix ones. It'll be the easiest one to. to yeah, understand. those are a little less. Yeah, they're less weird. Yeah. And because like the older yeah. ones, they had a lot of older references, particularly they had a lot of references yeah. to like 60s and 70s. Uh, really obscure American TV and commercials and stuff. So if you didn't grow up with that, like you might not know what they're talking about most of the time. But um, you know, I'm just I don't know. I I, I, I guess I'm I'm kind of like the same age. I'm a little bit younger than they are, but um, I remember a lot of the TV shows and movies that they're referencing just because yeah. I saw them as a kid. So, so Sandra asking about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sandra, just watch the Netflix. Just watch the Netflix ones. Yeah. She needs to see at least one episode. The easiest ones to start with are the Netflix ones. But keep in mind, though, that the older ones, that's not... Yeah. They're, all the people are different and all the voices are different. Yeah. So it's the same general setup, but if you see, like, the original shows, it's all different people. Yeah. Like, in the voices of the robots. It's the same robots, but the people doing the voices are different. They changed out the people doing the voices a couple of times. They're asking what our Instagram is. It's 13 o'clock, right? Yeah, I think it's yeah. 13. Oh, what is it? 13 o'clock or 13 o'clock podcast? One of those yeah. things. You'll find it. Yeah, we do have an Instagram. Wait, do you have an Instagram on your own? I have my own Instagram, okay. too. Because I just changed mine. I had a Jenny yeah. Ashford one, and I just never posted on it. So I just was like, fuck it. And I just changed that one to I don't really use Instagram to uh, communicate that much. I do. I, I, I mostly just post shit about the show on it. I mostly just use it to keep up with like uh, the uh, fitness industry, you know, what bodybuilders are doing, the male and female bodybuilders, and just look at my competition, you know. I look at that. <laughs> Your competition. Look at my competition. <laughs> you know, I'm For saying, Mr. Well, Universe. Well, no, there's no way I'm going to beat that. Hi, Pookie. Thought I heard the door creaking. Yeah. <laughs> I just try to keep, keep, my, keep my eye oh, no, on you don't. What's, what's possible for a guy my age and what can be achieved and how they did it. Um, and also like, uh, Ooh, look at her sneaking in from the side, nope. looking at, looking at goth girls and what they're wearing and what they're doing, which helps me fucking, you know, shop for Jenny. And of course <laughs> I'm into, into aesthetics. What's funny, you know, probably coming across on the show, the way I come across probably doesn't translate real well. I'm really into girl shit. I'm really into girl shit. It, it annoys Jenny. But I like, Wait, you know, does it? Oh, I okay. think so. <laughs> I'm in a girl clothing and stuff. No, wear this, wear this, wear that. You know, I mean, she's just like, I'm not your doll or whatever, you know, but I, I like, well, it I is like kind girl of, stuff. Well, yeah, I know. I get that. But yeah. there there comes a point where, you know, I, I'm I'm my own person. Yeah, it's no, like, you don't really, I don't really. And also, I really, really, really don't like being told what to do. Yeah, she's like, she's real pig headed. And I, I just. That's not pig headed. I just yeah. don't like being told what to do. Well, if I was thing. a dude, it's nobody would say I was pig headed. <laughs> I just, I, I like female fashion. I kind of keep up with it, but the, the goth fashion, you know, I don't really care. Which about is which is its whole thing. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't even I don't know care about mainstream female. I don't fashion. even know what's going on in the regular no. fashion thing, no. whatever it is they're wearing. You know, call Tom BTK. Sure. Yeah. Somebody should. Yeah, yeah. If I'm gonna dress up in women's clothing and put bury my. <laughs> <laughs> dig my own grave and take pictures and shit. Oh my god, if you would let me take a yeah. picture of you doing that, I will give you five hundred dollars. No, you wouldn't. No, I probably wouldn't. Maybe, maybe two hundred dollars. Mm -mm. <laughs> I had to get them to pay that. Y'all come with five hundred dollars. <laughs> I'll dig my own grave, dress up, put an anime mask on, and bury myself. And... Oh my god, that would be so fucking funny. Yeah, you got to fucking set up a fucking Kickstarter for that. <laughs> Look Pepper. at Pookie. What you doing? What are you doing? Oh, she's setting up. Got a big head. old fucking saucer eyes. I'm glad that I closed. Well, she came down here and she was like looking like I'm gonna jump on that shit. Yeah. And I was like, no, you better not jump. Look, on I know that everybody shit. wants to talk. They want to ask all these crazy ass questions. But we gotta start this fucking show. We probably we do. We gotta yet. start this show. I mean, what time is it? Uh, do you know what time it is? Five thirty. Oh, okay. We still got loads of time. We still got like time. I said, that's the makeup and the hair is like takes the longest. Yeah. I mean, I kind of already have an idea of what I'm going to wear, so I can just slap that on and slap some nails on, okay. and then we can get the fuck out of here. It's not, yeah. And we don't have to be there like, we don't, right and, when they open. And we don't have very far to go. 
No, it's very close. And we're going to get some food tonight. We we gonna we gonna go to Chantel's? Probably go to Chantel's. I wonder if they're going to be doing some karaoke tonight. You know they're going to be doing karaoke. Maybe you'll be drunk enough to do some. Yeah. Going to get Will to get up there and start singing. Well, he doesn't need any encouraging. (laughs) He'll just do it anyway. I'll have to get some video of that shit. I can't remember what song he sang, though. That was kind of... I'm not... I wasn't that drunk. I remember him getting up and singing, but I can't remember what song it was. All right. So this was the topic that everyone voted for. Look at Pokey back yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, she's sitting there blanking at me. I don't know. She's doing the slow blink. I was gonna say, I think I got my first slow blink from Path Kitty today. Yeah. When I took him some food, I and he ate the food and I petted him and everything, and then he sits by the bench and he just looked over at me like that and like slow blink. She looked at herself in the mirror. She's so weird. Yeah, she looked at herself. She in stares the at mirror. herself in the mirror. Yeah. And then sometimes she goes, meow. Yeah, talks to herself the weirdest thing yeah. i've ever seen she does that pretty much every night like she jumps yeah. up on the bathroom counter and looks in the bathroom mirror she's wow. such, she's a weird kitty <laughs> david june says i was always a joe bob briggs guy on shutter his uh drive-in theater whatever is uh that new season just started on shutter so i gotta catch up on that because i think there's a couple couple shows that i didn't see did you see what bridget said what it says my husband is the same way as tom and jenny i said the same thing i'm not your dog yeah, see? Yeah. Well, it's, it's you know, you don't like having other people's will imposed upon you all the time. will, whatever. <laughs> whatever. You know. I'm a power top. <laughs> I'm a dom. <laughs> I'm a leather daddy. <laughs> I'm not a sub. A I'm not a sub, leather daddy. Yeah. I'm not a sub, Yeah, though. yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm a heterosexual leather daddy. <laughs> That's really funny. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, you know. I'll, I'll make some concessions, but don't go too far with that shit, because mm-hmm. I'll be like, yeah, no. All right. So, like I said, we're going to talk about some creepy disappearances again. You guys seem to really like this topic. Actually, I really like this topic as well. This is our fifth volume of this, I think. Yeah, we may have done a lot of these programs. Um, Well, the sad thing about it is that, so I go to, like, one of those missing person sites, and I'm just like, okay, so I need, like, you know, a handful more cases to do. And I had to check, like, our past shows. Thank you, Gadgy. When you guys head out, I'm going to take my beer to the kitchen, lean on the counter, and pretend we're allowed in pubs over here. <laughs> Aw. Soon. Don't worry. Um, but yeah, so I had to go back to our all our old shows, like the last four volumes, and check to make sure that I didn't repeat anything. Um, I'm pretty sure that I didn't, but if I did, I'm sorry. Uh, but like I said, it's really depressing because you go to these missing person sites, and there's just... I mean, just pages and pages and pages and pages of people that are missing and they don't know where they are. And it's like the most terrifying thing I've ever seen. Jen Allen says, hi, I'll like the hair, Jenny. Thank you. Yeah, it's a wig. Uh, wearing this out tonight later. And uh, like I said, I had to already do my makeup. So I was like, well, I might as well put the wig on too because I have to put the wig cap on. And then it's like, you know what I mean? It's this, it's this whole thing. Like I said, I have to have, I have to be all like tactical with how I get ready to go out because it's so complicated it has so many moving parts so one of the first ones that i wanted to talk about um and i wanted to talk about this case for it's pretty old but i wanted to talk about this one for a couple of reasons one because if you guys are uh following my flickers of fear my movie reviews i just reviewed the 2020 movie shirley with elizabeth moss which was kind of about wasn't about shirley jackson but she was like a character in it and in that movie she was working on her novel hangs a man and that novel was partially based on this girl's disappearance. Um, another thing, too, is that when this young woman disappeared, she disappeared from this place in Vermont where several people disappeared during a five year span. So many uh, that they call it the Bennington Triangle because so many people have disappeared. So I want to talk to. Yeah, I want to talk about that a little bit, too, because, uh, yeah, that's pretty weird. But like I said, I have some more cases that I kind of chose sort of at random so uh you ready to yeah get into it yeah go ahead have you guys ever done a show on the national park disappearances not yet but that is on the list i do actually want to do that this one uh this first case paula jean weldon um she kind of disappeared i don't know if it was a national park but she disappeared from like kind of a national like a hiking trail or whatever so this happened back in 1946 So Paula Weldon, she was a sophomore at Bennington College, as I mentioned, in Bennington, Vermont. 
Now, the last time she was seen was December 1st, 1946. She worked um, at the college in the dining hall. So she had worked through the breakfast and lunch shift. And then she came back to her door room, dorm room and she was talking to her roommate. And then for whatever reason, she says to her roommate, um, you know, I'm going to go take a study break and I'm going to go for a hike. But she didn't tell her roommate where she was going exactly. So apparently she leaves the campus about 2.30 p.m. or a little bit after that. Now, they don't think that she was carrying any money or if she did, it was like just a little bit. And um, they also found later on she had left behind an uncashed check that her parents had sent uh, for her living expenses at the college. Um, also, it was kind of cold out and she didn't really have a coat or anything like that. She, you know, she wasn't she wasn't really dressed for the weather, in other words. Now, she was actually spotted hitchhiking. And I know what you guys are thinking, but that's not what happened. She was hitchhiking near the campus and someone going by in a car picked her up at 2.45 p.m. Now, she told this person, now, like I said, this is the 1940s. So, you know, hitchhiking, like I said, it, it happened a lot in the up until the 70s until serial killers started killing everybody doing that. But um, I guess you could still do that back in this time or not because she didn't. She didn't she, make she's it. Made, but it wasn't this person that picked her up. I'm just saying right. it wasn't necessarily hitchhiking that okay. did her in this time. Because she was hitchhiking. The guy picked her up at 245. She said that she was going to hike on the long trail uh, off Route 9, which is uh, near Glastonbury Mountain. So the driver dropped her off uh, about three miles away from where she was going. And a bunch of other people saw her, like, after that time. She was actually just walking along the trail, just going for a hike, just like she said that she was going to, apparently. Now, the last confirmed sighting of Paula Weldon was at 4 p.m. At this point, she talked to a dude on the trail, and uh, she asked him, like, how far it went. And he said, oh, it goes all the way to Canada. Um, at this point, this was December in Vermont, so the sunset was fairly early. It was about 5 o'clock uh, p.m., and it started snowing a little bit after that, uh, you know, and it snowed quite a bit. I think it was, like, three inches of snow. So, like I said, it was pretty cold out. Now, after she had asked that dude on the trail where, you know, where the trail went to or how far it went, nobody ever saw her ever again. She just disappeared. Where was this again? Vermont. Okay. Bennington, Vermont. Probably a real rural area, huh? Um, well, it was right near a college. Okay, so, so not that rural. Not really, no. Somebody got her. Now, interesting. Okay, so her roommate uh, was worried about her because obviously she, uh, you know, discovered that she hadn't come home the night before. Um, and later that morning, the roommate, uh, you know, told the school authorities about her disappearing. Now, at this point, the students at Bennington were supposed to sign themselves out if they planned to stay out past 11 p.m. And then when they came back, they were supposed to check in with the school security officer. Obviously, Paula Weldon had not done either of those things. Um, and also, not surprisingly, she didn't turn up at her classes on the following Monday either, uh, at which point the college officials notified her family and notified the police. So since everybody knew that she'd gone out hiking on the long trail, uh, they all went and started looking, but they found nothing, no sign of her at all. Um, this is very unusual. This was 1946. And in 1946, Vermont had no state police. I guess all like all their police were local. And in fact, it was this particular case that made them pass the law to have a state police force. So there you go. But they didn't have it then. So I guess there was some kind of inner, you know, departmental wrangling as there always is. What? Nothing. Well, they wanted a state police force because it's more centralized and you could make sure that they had the better training. Yeah. You know, during this era, during this era, cops were just nothing more than a mall cop. There, you know, that that's all it was. It was a mall cop that walked around. They didn't have any special training or anything. I mean, uh, when you think of the police, like you got protesters saying to fund the police and shit nowadays. It, it sounds insane. It kind of is insane. It is insane. All right. But there's also an argument for it because for the longest time, the United States didn't have police. No. No, there wasn't any professional police forces. There's a, you can optionally not have one, but if you're not going to have cops, then you have to have, everybody's got to have guns. You have to take care of yourself. And, um, 
you want to want to bring back things like dueling and things like that. You know what I mean? Look, you you will have anarchy, but you know a lot of countries are like that. Have been like that forever. Um. Uh, so, yeah, of course. Yeah, well, like I say, that you know, it, so it was kind of harder for them to mobilize and centralize because right. they didn't have state police. Um, but they had people from other states, like, you know, cops and stuff from other states like Massachusetts, Connecticut, New York. They kind of came in to help looking for this young woman. Now, at first, uh, they kind of thought that probably, maybe, she had just wandered off uh, into the mountains and had died somewhere and died of exposure. But since they did all these massive searches and they didn't find any sign of her whatsoever, they started thinking maybe, maybe somebody took her somebody along the path like somebody kidnapped her and killed her and you know buried her someplace else so they started looking into her background um to see if maybe she you know knew somebody that had done something to her if she had left of her own accord maybe she was having some problems um they apparently found she didn't really have a steady boyfriend had never really had one uh she was a good student she wasn't flunking out or anything she was an art major although she'd been thinking about switching her um major to botany i believe uh, because she became was becoming more interested in that um they said maybe like according to family and friends they said well she was kind of like a little bit depressed at the time of her disappearance because you know like i said she was thinking about changing her major or whatever but you know nobody thought it was anything unusual you know what i'm saying so they're saying well she wasn't like sad enough to you know kill herself or run away or anything um and all of her belongings were left behind um, and usually like, you know, as the family usually says, it's like, she's not just the type of person that would just take off without telling us now, even though from that day to this, from 1946 to now, they have not found a single hair of this girl's head anywhere along that trail. No one has ever found any remains. No one has ever found any, anything. Read what my friend Gramther says uh, in the comment section. There's a guy named Gramther. So that's his, that's his screen name. He's a retired policeman that I grew up with in high school. Read what he says. It says, <clears throat> I worked as a federal game warden in Eastern Oregon in the 1990s. Every year, a hiker or a hunter would disappear in the high desert. Sometimes a body would be found. Other times, it was like the remote terrain just gobbled them up. Bones, yep. clothes, and everything. Yeah, see, that's kind of where Talked I'm... About now, I'm not, now, I'm not saying that she wasn't murdered. I mean, she might have been murdered, yeah. but... Or she might have wandered off, gotten lost, and died of exposure. You know, so yes, they do these extensive searches of the area, but these are pretty remote yeah. areas. So it's entirely possible. I think she was probably murdered and hidden. And then um, I've said many times before in the uh, in the show, you know, I've done a lot of times in the fucking field, you know, with the army. And even before that, you know, at my dad's place out there and fucking... Lit in, in Mississippi, hunting. If you leave something dead out overnight in the woods, in the south, you come back the next morning, it'll be gone. You won't be able to find it. I left a turkey out. Long story, but I left a turkey out, and I said, I'll go back and get it later. Came back a few hours later, and it was gone. I don't know what happened to the turkey. It was a dead turkey. Well, animals they, probably they came by and were like, woohoo, yeah, free yeah, turkey. Food. So you put a human body out there in an area where, you know, dead bodies give off smells that to a, an animal can smell miles away. We can't smell it. But they'll come and get it. Uh, nothing well, goes yeah, to waste. free meat. Now, she may have, been killed, may have been killed by a person, but she was us on that path. I'd like to see where this terrain was at the time. I'd like to see what the conditions were that season. Because there's another, there's another chance is that she may have been grabbed by a mountain lion. That's possible. That's yeah. possible too. They'll wait along a path. Now, a mountain lion won't prey on a human normally, but if that mountain lion's sick, or maybe or really hungry, or maybe killed a child, a human child at one time, and got a meal off of that, then they can kind of get the habit and they start start thinking. Well, you know, you can eat humans, and yeah, they start just doing as that. Delicious as any right. other kind of meat. But uh, even not that I would know. <laughs> here in North America, big cats though don't see humans as food; they run from them, even even mountain lions. But like I said, if they start small, they can make it a part. Yeah, because I've repertoire. heard about you know like little kids getting yeah. lost and getting jumped on by mountain lions. Yeah. not so much grown people. It does happen, but I think it's more common when it's like kid. a little kid. Yeah, that like kind of wandered away from their parents, and then a mountain lion's like, "Ooh, snack!" And Animals, like jumps on them. 
Animals in North America tend to judge you by how far how far your eyes are off the ground. So if you stand tall and your eyes are high off the ground, you're not food. The higher your your eyes are, the more likely are that they won't see you as food. It's a strange thing, but it's just something that they noticed. Also, if you're not acting like a prey yeah. animal, I think that kind of uh, that's kind of a yeah. factor as well. And people are kind of overly worried about bears here, you know. Um, no. Black bears are almost totally harmless. I mean, they they have been they have eaten people in the past, but that's the individual behavior of a certain black bear that had its own personal history. It's not normal for black bears to eat. Generally, people. black bears are pretty chill. Yeah, generally, um, and unless even, you fuck with their babies. I'm yeah, uh, no, actually, no, not even a black bear. Black bear, you know, arrange your park ranger or grab a black bear's babies, and the fucking mama just runs along and where are you doing my cub? They don't attack. Why are you taking yeah, my? Yeah, why baby? are you taking? Where are you going? You can manhandle a a, a, a black bear. <laughs> They'll grab them by the feet and pull them out of damn garbage cans. It depends on how big the bear yeah, is and yogi. what what you know how rude you are. If it has an out, there's a lot of black bears did not evolve to be predators. Not the black bears. They're they they evolved to run first, ask questions later. The brown bear. Grizz, Kodiak, that's a totally different ball Polar game. bear. They're, he, polar bear is one of the worst ones. Polar bear fuck they're, you up. They're dangerous and they're, <laughs> and they're dangerous because they're very intelligent and you're smaller than they are. So they just see you as food, if you, especially if you had to handle yourself wrong. But that guy who made that program proved that you can walk up to a grizzly bear. You can walk up to him and befriend grizzly bears. Until the one day when you can Until can't. you run into the wrong grizzly bear. <laughs> He ran into the wrong grizzly bear one day, and he goes, I don't like that bear. He goes, if a bear ever eats me out here, it's, it's going to be, be that, that one. Because that one's such a Yeah, nice. I don't like the way that bear is. I don't like the way he looks. He says that look on his face. Yeah, like, a month later, that bear ate him. Yeah. And, and, and they captured it on tape. He was running the tape at the time. Ate him and his girlfriend. I would not advise listening to that tape. And, and like, yeah. Right. It's, it's, it was uh, eating, eating her alive and him it's alive. It's pretty horrifying. Yeah. It's pretty horrifying. And, but... To defend what he was saying, even though he shouldn't have never been doing what he was doing, he walked up and befriended 20, 30 bears and remembered them. Yeah. And worked, got a relationship with them. You know, and he knew which bears that he could interact with and ones that he couldn't, ones that were didn't like him or ones that could pop. And well, the bear that ate him was a weak and aging bear. That wasn't eating. It's just kind of, well, it's just kind of like people. Animals have their own little personalities, too. Yeah. At least, like, you know, higher mammals and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's like you can't, across the board, say, oh, you know, bear's going to eat you or bear's not going to eat you. Well, it's like, yeah, maybe that particular bear would eat you. Yeah. Maybe most bears wouldn't eat you. Bears are pure emotion. And they know, they understand only emotion. And, um, you know, that's why a guy that... You know, there's a guy who owns some of them and he loves them, you know, and he goes, you're a good bear. He just keeps, he just repeats, you're a good bear. And that bear loves that man. And that's what keeps him so, from I getting, I am a good bear. Yeah. And that's what bear. keeps him from getting to eaten. Is that, <laughs> is that he constantly tells that bear that he's a good bear. Don't ever tell him he's a bad bear. Yeah, he's going to knock your, your fucking your, your head, head off. Yeah. Whack. <laughs> but he's got a good relationship <laughs> with that bear. They're, they have the intelligence similar to a chimpanzee, actually. Uh, and a personality kind of like a dog, which that's, can be a very dangerous combination yeah They're, but like i said it just sometimes it depends on the bear and yeah. sometimes it depends on if you come out of wrong yeah so she may have been um depending on what 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 animal migration was at the time you know grampers is in there as a gray warden he, he can he can back up what i'm saying we, we both know the field and and the local animals around here depending on what animal migration was like at that time what the season was like how hard of a season it was she may have been eaten by a mountain lion or a bear. Maybe, but like I said, I mean, it's winter. It was December. Yeah. It was like early December. It was really cold That's out. That's a good time to get eaten. Well, the maybe. bears would have been hibernating. That's what I'm saying. And the thing about it, like Amanda's saying, uh, she's worked in multiple national parks. It's like mountain lions get punished way too much. They don't generally like people and avoid yeah. them. I, like I said, if anybody that gets attacked by a mountain lion, there would have to be ex like strange circumstances. Well, I don't know. The normally they wouldn't. This is also not present day America. This is the 40s. That's true too. Which uh, there were areas that were more secluded back then. 
more in their natural state, even in the United States. Even though a lot of people believe city people whose feet never left the fucking pavement will sit around and tell you all day long what the fucking nature is like and they've never lived in it, okay? They have this idea that there are places on the United States... They have these places... They have this idea that every inch of the United States is populated and tamed. Bullshit. I don't think anyone has that idea. Well, they, they talk like that. There are places <laughs> in fucking Washington State that mankind has never set foot. It's just as, it's just as much as... Canada. There are places in Canada where man's never been. So, and there are places in California on the Sierra Nevada mountain range where rarely a person has tread. There's a lot of places here that are just still, well. It's a big. It's big area. You look at a map and you think, oh, there's not much there. No, it, that map does not illustrate the actual size. You know, uh, uh, void. Now, it is true. If you drop, you can drop a man off anywhere in any location in the United States as long as he picks a direction and walks long enough. Eventually, he'll hit a road. If you eventually. can make it, eventually. <laughs> okay. If you can make it that far, in the desert, you probably wouldn't. But no. you know, because um, you got your own whole right. other set of problems. But she may have been, she, you know, just this is just throwing this out there. She disappeared, but this may have been an animal attack. Maybe, or Maybe. like I said, could have been a creepy person. Could have been. More likely um, a person. She probably, either that or she wandered off the trail. I don't know because the trail, it was a pretty popular trail. Um, she wasn't really dressed for the cold weather. So I feel like she wasn't really planning on staying out that long. Yeah. So I kind of feel like either somebody snatched her or she got lost somehow. Like yeah. she wandered off the trail or something. Like maybe it started to snow and she couldn't see the trail anymore or something like that. I don't know. But nobody knows what happened to her. And that was like way back in 1946. Now, as I said, the uh, her dad actually petitioned uh, or, you know, was like a lobbyist. And he he was the one that was kind of instrumental in getting uh, Vermont to, you know, pass a law saying that they had a state police then. So it, it was actually that disappearance that caused them to have that. Um, and like I said, it still disappeared. Now, as I mentioned, her disappearance was, I believe it was the second one in the five disappearances that happened right in the same area and right around the same time period, uh, which caused one uh, journalist to dub the area the Bennington Triangle, much like the Bermuda Triangle. because there was, And these are weird because these disappearances, even though they're in the same area and within the same, same five-year time span, um, they're otherwise kind of like unrelated. So it's like a really strange, because it's not a big area. So it's really weird that like, people would like five people would just disappear like in a short time like this so this was between 1945 and 1950 five people like i said disappeared in the same exact area including paula jean weldon now interestingly so this is centered around glastonbury mountain uh and the towns like surrounding it now the first person to disappear and this was about a year uh before uh paula jean weldon disappeared was Mitty rivers he was this guy and he disappeared November 12th, 1945. He was 74 years old and he was out hunting. He was a very avid hunter and fisherman, whatever he, you know, and he went out all the time. He was actually a guide for a group of four hunters going up the mountain. On the way back, he got ahead of the group. And when they got to the point where they're supposed to meet up with him, he was gone and was never seen again. The only, uh, the only clue to his whereabouts that they found later on when they searched was a single rifle cartridge found in a stream. Now they thought maybe that he had leaned over the stream and the cartridge had dropped out of his pocket. It was unfired. But as, as far as I know, yeah. as yeah. far as I know, they said rifle cartridge, not brass casing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He must've dropped it. Yeah. But other than that, they have found no trace of him either. Uh, as I said, he was an experienced hunter and fisherman had lived in the area all his life. As far as I can tell, and, uh, you know, so they never found him either. Um, now, the second person, like I said, was Paula Jean Weldon. She disappeared in December of 1946. The next person to disappear was James Tedford. And this was in 1949. This is December 1st, 1949. So this is exactly three years after Paula Weldon's disappearance. Now, he was actually living in the Bennington Soldiers' Home. And he was in uh, St. Albans in Vermont visiting relatives and was, re this one is really weird. He was coming home on the bus and he disappeared off the bus somehow. So according to witnesses, 
he got disappeared off the bus. He got listen to this shit. Okay. It's like so he gets on the bus. Yeah. And he was still on the bus at the last stop, right? Okay. Now the last stop, and then the bus was going to go to Bennington, but I guess it made one stop before it went there. Like that was its, you know, the end of the line or whatever. Somewhere between the last stop and Bennington, Vermont, he disappeared. All of his shit was still on the bus, like all of his luggage. And there was a timetable for the bus, like left open on his seat. But That's there weird. was no trace of him at all. It was like somebody like just aliens abducted him right off of the fucking bus. That's some weird shit. That kind of reminds me. That's was, pretty weird, right? That reminds me of when I was in Boston. I got fucking hammered one time at the, at the bar. Mm -hmm. And got onto the red line and was headed back towards um, Davis Square. I, I had to get off on that exit. I think it was called Davis. Yeah, Davis Square. And somehow or another, I fell asleep on the damn train. I hate when that happens. Yeah. I've had that happen a time or two. I fell asleep on it. <laughs> and when I woke up, it wasn't moving. And then everybody was gone. Because, <laughs> you see, it shuts down at like 2 in the morning. Yeah, you've been like, oh my God, I'm at, I'm yeah, at, this is how like horror movies start. <laughs> yeah. And I was at the end of the line, and they yeah. put the damn train up. They were like, ah, eh, fuck that guy. No, no, they, no. <laughs> no, I was like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> Well, the doors then opened, okay? And I got up to get out and look out, and the fucking the train, one of the train guys was walking towards me. And he goes, oh, you're up. And he says, yeah, we... We didn't want to wake you. We're putting the train so up, man. We got to come sleeping. on out of there. Because they saw me on the cameras. Right. Because the train's got cameras in it. Yeah. I was sleeping in that shit. Everybody else got off. I was sleeping. And I had to get out of fucking the very end of the line, and uh, which was two or three stops away from where i was supposed to get so i had to walk i was drunk had to walk walk an extra so like you had to stagger three home. or four miles to where davis and stop what was. did we learn don't fall asleep it, i didn't learn shit i didn't <laughs> learn <laughs> shit because i fucking because I, I did it again God no damn it. i didn't learn anything it's just it was not a learning experience <laughs> because i was pretty hammered i was like, okay all right and i, and I had whatever yeah and i didn't want to spend the money to get a cab I don't blame you there. I was I was it. young then, you know, money's hard harder to come by. So I had to walk like an extra three or four miles. That sucks. Yeah. Oh well. But it was fucking weird to wake up at the end of the station. And, and no one's like, in there. Yeah, and it was like around because the, the train comes down the one track and then it curves around. Yeah. Well they have a place where they can park all the trains. Right. And they were parking them all. And evidently the guy that was fucking run, controlling that train, I guess he, he probably did the cameras. That shit was funny. Probably happens a lot. Well, I'm sure it does. Yeah. But when the doors opened up, it woke me up. Yeah, I don't know. I like, oh. Tammy said, I wonder how many people thought you were dead. <laughs> they didn't want to nah, touch you. I was sitting up. You were probably snoring. No yeah, you. sitting up. Going. Yeah, wearing goth clothes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Actually, you should be glad you're not a girl, because that might have ended very yeah. differently. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> But yeah, I don't. I don't think I've ever. I've fallen asleep on because I used to take the bus all the time before I had a car. I think I've fallen asleep on the bus a couple times, just yeah. not from being drunk, just from being really tired. And I missed the yeah. stop, but only by like one or two. And sometimes, sometimes you'd have some creeper following you, and you'd have to get off at a different stop so he didn't know where you lived. You had to you had to do that a few times as well. Uh, but yeah, so this dude apparently just disappeared off his fucking bus, and nobody knows where he is. All his stuff was still on the bus. Somebody and it was like, must have thrown him off a bus. Or he jumped out the window. But nobody knows anything. Nobody said anything. It's like you would think that at least the driver would be like, yeah, where the fuck did he go? He, he must let... have jumped out the window. Maybe. It's the only way he could have done it. That's so fucking weird. Why must have been it? like a suicide. Maybe. It just seems like if you're going to commit suicide by jumping out of a bus window, which, okay, random. Well, why would you like take any stuff with you then? Well, maybe or he, look at the timetable. You're reading too much into it. Maybe, well, I don't know. Maybe jumping out the window isn't how he committed suicide. He open, he 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 put the window down and waited for them to go to a light, and then he jumped out, and then the bus left with all his stuff in there, and then he went off and fucking committed suicide. And you know what I mean? Staging is a disappearance, basically. Hmm. Yeah. Kind, kind of like the dude that staged the UFO abduction what, from the air, from the airplane he was flying. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. He's calling in through the to the tower, saying the UFOs behind him. You know, it's got me. I see the beam of light, and then you never heard. From I was him yeah, I was just like I was thinking about yeah. that because that kept when I was researching yeah. like different disappearances, that yeah. dude's case kept kept coming. Yeah, out. and then they found I think they found the plane, didn't they? But they didn't find him. I don't know. I have to look that up. I thought they found the plane eventually. 
It was over the water, wasn't it? If I'm remembering it right. Yeah. But like I said, I don't, but I don't, I don't think remember the details. Abducted him. I think he killed himself, but he didn't want his dad to think that he killed him. He wanted people to think that he... people. I think he wanted people to remember him. And well, so I think mission accomplished. staging a UFO abduction was was part of well, his Well, yeah, that's a lot more splashy than just yeah. like, you know, hanging yourself that's what or I think taking happened. an overdose or something. That's what I think. Happened. I mean, I guess if you're going to do like, I'm not saying like you should, yeah. but if, if you're going to do it, at least like do it in style. You and know? I think well, I think part of it is that he didn't want his parents to think that he killed himself. Yeah, that's what I think. Part Although of it. that said, and I think we've talked about this before because I've kind of talked about uh, some people that killed themselves especially back in Victorian England, for whatever reason, or early 20th century England, by jumping in front of trains. And I'm always just kind of like, please, please don't do that. I mean, it's just kind of like, one, Messy. somebody has to clean yeah. your splattered carcass up off the shit. It's like, why would you? And the dude that drove the train into and couldn't stop, and all the people on the train are going to be, like, traumatized forever. So why would you want to do that to people? Well, one of my... Uh friends when i was in boston she lived next door to me her and her husband and she was a mental health uh professional she took care of a bunch of outpatients and uh, they were all medicated instead of putting them in, in into into institutions but she always had several suicides a year she said there were certain kinds of them that she said when they usually committed suicide they wanted it to be as painful and as like yeah okay and, and 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 as splashy as possible because one they feel that they have to atone for some kind of an yeah they thought they deserved it sure but they did all right which is awful and a lot of times this a lot of times they've imagined what they did yeah it's not something that they actually did it's the shit that they imagined that they did or sometimes they did do it but it wasn't their fault that, like one of those kind of things like you know sexual abuse yeah you know what I mean like. So some chick would think that, you know, she was responsible for her sexual abuse. Well, because, that's very common. Yeah. And, you know, because like, it was like, it might've been her dad, you know, her dad told, told her it was her fault. You know, that kind of well, shit. Well, yeah, that's what I mean. That's, that shit right. fucks you up forever. Well, especially when it happens to you when you're a kid. She told me about that one patient that she had. And what that girl did is that she went into her bedroom with a can of gasoline and poured it all over herself and the bed and set herself and the bed on fire. Oh, and she was alive for a long oh, time no. in that fire. That's a rough way to go. Yeah. And uh, I was like, what? You know, I was she, questioning she, it. I was like, why did she just kill herself? herself? But yeah, yeah. They, she you know, she's trying herself. to burn that's away, so sad. burn away all the guilt and, and everything, you know, so. That's why and that's so it. that's so fucking shitty because I feel yeah. like that happens so much, especially like you know with girls that were sexually abused when they were kids, yeah. like by their dads or whoever, um, or family friends, and th their whole life, especially when it happens to you when you're really young, like their whole life they're fucked up because they think that all that shit is their fault and they well, just the dude is they doing just it. deserve to be treated like shit. All yeah, the, all well, the, the dude time. is doing it to her. I don't know who it is, but the, the dude that's doing it to her is telling them that right do it, and it's usually like a kid, so you know they just believe it to be true. Yeah, because it's yeah. usually it's an authority figure or yeah. a parent or whatever. Yeah. And when you're a kid, you kind of believe everything that authority figures tell of, you. They use a bunch of manipulation on them. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, you know, if the girl starts to enjoy it's it, awful. then they get even more fucking guilty about it because they brainwash them into thinking that they enjoy it and this and that. And they play all kinds of games with their minds. Well, and, and the, they're growing up in all that. Yeah. And so when they when they reach adulthood, they're they're. they're kind of fucking confused about what was true and what was not true and um instead of just trying to set it down and realize none of that shit was true because you weren't in charge <laughs> well the shitty thing about it too is that i feel yeah. like sometimes abusers take advantage of that because yeah. girls in particular and you know women in particular yeah they have a tendency if something goes wrong to blame themselves they yeah. turn everything you know in general they turn everything internally yeah they don't say it's like oh you know you fucked up or they're like yeah. what did i do? i fucked up i must have done something wrong to deserve this i must have done something to deserve this so i do kind of feel like abusers take advantage of that yeah. proclivity that is more uh common in women i think that yeah I mean. and then when like in that particular case i think i think she said that girl was also fucking schizophrenic so whether or not the the abuse caused the schizophrenia or the schizophrenia allowed the abuse or it was just a combination of a, a bunch combination of, problems, of a bunch of, bunch shitty of problems things happening at once, at once. And, and, you know what i mean some people just are not really destined to live for very long because you just got too many goddamn problems and a lot of them are 
not your fault, but they're not solvable either. You know, um, that's just the way it is. Life it's like just, that. I know, it's like, yeah. it's super, super If I fun. take a frog, I can do all kinds of weird shit to the frog and fuck that frog up. Is that that frog's fault? No. Is that frog fucked up? Yeah. Is it fair? No. Not at all. Life is not fair. Life is fucking extremely cruel. Is that right? No. But Well, it's just, it's indifferent. Yeah, it's indifferent. You know, life it's itself is not right. Matter of fact, yeah. you know, Nietzsche and, and, and Schopenhauer would say that the ultimate form of wrongness is to exist. Okay? Existence itself is wrong. So, you know, you're We shouldn't off. even be here. Yeah, you shouldn't be here. Right. So, you know, which, you know, I, I, I like that old philosophy, but you can't... Those motherfuckers were crazy, too. I mean, it was interesting shit that they're we're talking all crazy about. But they're they're all, that was all mental experiments that they were doing sure. on paper, you know. But, uh, you know, like the perfect state... Even the Buddhists believe the perfect state of existence was non-existence because there's no way to impose on other creatures. The fairest thing that could ever happen is for you not to exist because everything you are was taken from something else. Because your Every, ass is in the fucking way. Yeah. yeah. Everything you have could have could have could have belonged to somebody else who really needed it. You, your existence in itself is imposing on the universe. It's not fair that you live. You know, that that's that goes back to a lot of the shit you hear these fucking young kids saying to get it's not fair. Yeah, it ain't fair. Life isn't about fairness. If you really wanted fairness, just kill yourself. That's what the fucking great scholars were that's what the great philosophers said. Although none of them did, though, did they? No. no, no, no. <laughs> well, legend has it Siddhartha Gautama did. That I've heard that, but that I, he became so I, I don't know how much I believe that, that he stopped eating, and they were like, "I will not take food from this earth. This is all you know. I don't deserve it." He's hardcore. Know? And then they're like, uh, "Yeah, but we're giving you food. No, no, this is food. This should go to somebody else." Although, was that dude even a just... real person? I feel like nah, he was like some Jesus I don't think type he of was. shit there going. No. That's what I thought, too. No, I don't think he was. Well, they believe he was, but I don't think he ever Right, just... but people believe Jesus was a real he, dude. He was, is an, I, he was an... He was an... I, he was a... It's a demigod, basically. Yeah, yeah. You're, That's what I'm you're, saying. You're putting all of your Buddha... Or your Buddhistic ideals into onto a person okay yeah and could that person exist no they would die that's why in the story he does i can no longer impose on this planet stop feeding me i will just start he's the breatharian yes he's, I'm, think, I'm gonna go to a breatharianism he thinks he can just live yeah. on air he doesn't yeah. need any food or that's, water it's, it's not just vegetarianism it's not just veganism we're gonna go to breatharianism where you, you don't even eat just Breathe in the air. That's where you get your calories from air. Yeah, that's where all my calories are coming from. Solar yeah. power and fucking oxygen. Sure. Yeah. When are you going to be installing some solar panels on solar, your head? Some solar, solar some panels solar on panels. your head? Solar panels. Yeah. Solar panels. <laughs> Did you guys see Birdemic? No. Yeah. No one knows what I'm talking about. No, they don't know. That's okay. Amanda said, uh, true story, one of my previous jobs, we were stuck there an extra 12 hours while they cleaned up what was left of a guy who leapt in front of a train. Yeah. See, it's like, I get it. I get that you want to punish yourself, but man, don't punish other people like that. I well, just, I couldn't bring myself to do that. Uh, that just, I don't want somebody two. cleaning up after me. No, that got to part two. She said that some of the, some of them, when they committed suicide, it was to impose on other people. Just on purpose. On purpose. Wanted to be dead. It's a fuck you. I'm going to make you clean yeah, this I up. Yeah, I see that. I'm going to make you clean it. I'm going to make you see this. I'm going to make you clean this up. You're guilty. You did this to me. It's that's, that's what it is. Well, yeah, Fuck I do, you. because I know I'm not going to say what his name is, but uh, yeah, yeah. a friend of mine in high school, yeah. uh, several years later, uh, committed suicide. Yeah. And he very, it seemed very purposely, yeah. um, wrapped himself up in a blanket and shot himself in the head so that all the stuff would like just go all over the blanket. So and he wanted his dad to find him like that. Yeah. Because he did not like his dad. Yeah. So. You did this to me. And he knew that his dad would make you him. clean this up. I'm out yeah. of here. That's, that's the thinking. Yeah. Look at what you did to me. It's all selfish shit when you really think about it. Most of the time. It, I it, mean, itself. well, it depends on what your reasons are. Yeah. I know that a lot of people say, oh, suicide, selfish and stuff like that. I don't it, I don't think it always is. No, it, it, it depends is. on what your motivation well, is. Well, to get yourself to escape a fate worse than death, that's that's that's, that's very different. different. Very different. And like I said, some people suffering from certain mental mental illnesses, depression, um, yeah. to them being alive yeah. is a fate worse than death. Yeah. So and, I get that. And th their judgment isn't sound anyway. They're, they're malfunctioning. 
So you can't ascribe accurate moral... If you want to use moral systems, you can't really ascribe anything fucking logical to it. You know, it's a person being irrational. Yeah. So, Which, like I said, I get that. Yeah. But, you know, all this... I just feel like... I don't know. It's just so weird. I've, I've done so many... I, I wrote about so many true crime cases where the aftermath of a lot of them was like, oh, this dude was a suspect in the case and he killed himself by jumping in front of a train. It just, it happens so many times that I was just kind of like, what the fuck, man? That was like a trend for jumping yeah. in front of a train. Like I said, don't do that. Nobody wants to clean up after you. Um, but yeah, so yeah, so this guy disappeared off the bus, That's which is how we got off on that whole tangent. Nobody knows where he went. I don't know. Like I said, it's really weird because the driver, you would think that the driver would be like, yeah, he was here and then I turned around and he was gone. I don't know. It's like, she just fucking disappeared. I don't know. The aliens took him, I guess. So there was another person that disappeared, Paul Jepson. This was actually a kid. This was an eight-year-old. And he disappeared October 12th, 1950. This was the same area, the Bennington Triangle. He uh, was with his mom in a truck. Now, she got out of the truck and went over to like feed the pigs or whatever. Uh, she was gone for an hour because I guess there was a lot of pigs. And when she came back, uh, the son was gone. So either he got out of the truck and wandered off or somebody snatched him out of the truck. They uh, formed a bunch of search parties and looked for him, but they never, ever found him. Um, apparently they did some, they had some bloodhounds that they brought in. Uh, they tracked the kid to a local highway uh, and that was where they lost the trail. Um and this highway might have been right around the same area where Paula Jean Weldon disappeared. So, like I said, a lot of uh, folk legends have sprung up about this particular area in Vermont. The fifth and last disappearance uh, was Frida Langer. This was also 1950. This was only a little over two weeks after uh, that little eight-year-old kid had vanished. So it was October 28th, 1950. Frida Langer, she was 53. And her and her cousin, whose name was Herbert Elsner, they were at a campsite near the Somerset Reservoir, and they were going to go on a hike. Now, during the hike, uh, she slipped. Frida slipped and uh, fell into a stream. She wasn't hurt really badly or anything. But she told uh, Herbert, she's like, um, hey, it's like, you know, you hang around. We'll go back to the, I'll go back to the campsite, change clothes because she was all wet, and then I'll catch up to you. Now, they did that, but she never showed up. So at this point, uh, Herbert goes back to the campsite and sees that she hadn't returned. Nobody had seen her since they left. Over the next two weeks, five searches were conducted. Aircraft, helicopters, 300 searchers, whole nine yards. Um, now, this woman was unusual in the Bennington Triangle because they did eventually find her body. They found her several months later, May 12th, 1951. Her body was actually found near the Somerset Reservoir. Um, this area had been extensively searched seven months previously, but they had not found her then. Uh, but they did find her a little bit later on. However, they could not determine cause of death because the remains were too decomposed. So, as I said, these five disappearances during this short amount of time in this very same area, referred to as the Bennington Triangle, like I said. Now, the next couple cases I want to talk about, these are two, <coughs> again, that are kind of linked. Um... I don't know if I buy it, but these two are usually linked because they happened right around the same area where Ed Gein lived and he was active at the time. So some people have speculated that maybe one or both of these, uh, both of these victims were, were a victim of Ed Gein. I don't know if I buy it, but like I said, um, I think it's time for another drink, probably. You ready? You think you can handle it? Yeah. Well, like I said, it's going to be a while before we go. It'll wear off, yeah. And it'll wear off for then. But, okay. this, uh, but the second one will be the last one, though. All right. Because, like I said, we don't really want to be driving. Same thing? Yeah, let me get it the same thing. Yeah, because it's only six. We're not leaving for another, like, three hours. I think we're fine. We're fine. All right. So the next two, like I said, these are the disappearances of the two separate disappearances of Evelyn Grace Hartley and Georgia Weckler. These were both in Wisconsin, uh, right in around the lacrosse area. So Evelyn Hartley, she was actually, this happened in 1953. So she was actually babysitting a 20 month old toddler at the home of a uh, professor named Vigo Rasmussen, which is a fantastic name. Uh, he was a professor at La Crosse State College. Now, Rasmussen and his wife, um, I guess the night that this happened, there was like a big uh, homecoming game, like big football. Game. So a whole bunch of people in La Crosse, including the professor and his wife, were going to this game. Now, they had a regular babysitter, like a girl that came and babysat for their, you know, watch their kid 
But because the their regular babysitter was also going to the football game, they needed to get a replacement. So they got this girl, Evelyn Hartley, instead. Now, she... Okay, so apparently... So Evelyn shows up at the house. Uh, she was just going to study. The baby was asleep. You know, it was a little, little kid. And uh, so she brought a bunch of books with her. She was just going to, like, sit and study. Now, she was supposed to call her parents at 8.30 p.m. to check in and tell them that everything was okay. But she never called. So her dad just kept calling the house because obviously they knew where she was going. Um, but there was never any answer. So he started to get worried and goes over to the Rasmussen's house uh, to check on her. Now, when he gets there, he finds that the house's uh, doors are all locked. The lights were on. The radio was on. The baby was uh, still asleep in the crib. Totally fine. It was a little girl. However, uh, there was no sign of Evelyn there. The only um, disturbance in the house was that the furniture in the living room was kind of all disarranged, it says, so it was kind of all moved around. Um, Evelyn's textbooks were kind of scattered. They were sort of thrown about or knocked off the table. They found one of Evelyn's shoes uh, and her glasses, which were broken. They were on the living room floor. Uh, her other shoe was in the basement. They found that. So obviously they go down to the basement. Now all the windows on the upper portion of the house were all locked, but there was a basement window at the back of the house. And thank you. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, where was it? okay, so the basement window was on the back of the house. The screen on that window had been taken out and was leaning against the outside wall. Try that. Now... Yeah, it's pretty good. What's uh, what is it? It's that strawberry with the uh, pineapple with the uh, what do you call it? coconut? Yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. Uh, okay. So underneath this particular window, which was open, um, was a short step ladder. This step ladder belonged to the Rasmussen family. Uh, they'd been painting the basement, so I guess that's why it was out. Three of the other windows, which were still locked, had pry marks around them. So I guess somebody tried to get in there, like with a crowbar or whatever. Uh, they also found uh, some footprints from a pair of sneakers in the basement window box and in the living room. Now, in addition to these signs, obviously somebody had broken into this house and taken this girl. They also found um, quite a bit of blood. This, this was uh, 1953, so they couldn't do DNA, obviously. But the blood type was the same as Evelyn's blood type. They found it inside the house near the basement window, and they found it outside in the yard. Two of the pools, uh, there were two pools of blood in the yard, one stain 18 inches in diameter, which is a lot of blood. That's pretty good. So that's, that's, yeah. She was killed. Probably, to get but. Her out of the house, maybe. Very weird that they took her with them. <laughs> they wanted the body. For whatever reason. Sex. Yeah. Some necrophiles, yeah. maybe. That's pretty creepy, though. Well, maybe that wasn't the original plan. The original plan was to get her out of there alive. She struggled at the window. Maybe so. I mean, it seemed like whoever this was, whether it was one person or two people, um, they obviously tried a bunch of windows and Typically they wouldn't they open. Want. And finally, they found one that did open, used the stepladder, came into the basement, and then they must have come up to the living room because all of her shit... All of her books and everything were kind of dumped off the table. How old was she again? Um, she was a teenager. Okay. Yeah. She was like, you're not letting me, you know, you're not taking me out of the house. I'm not leaving with you. Well, yeah, shit, I don't blame her. She started fighting back and killed her. Yeah, maybe so. But like I said, yeah, the window threw her out the window and then climbed out the window and drug her out and fucking carried her off. Yeah. She like, she's still warm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was like a Ted Bundy motherfucker. Yeah. Something like that. That's like, oh well, I can I can deal All with right. him alive or dead. Everybody remember that about Ted Bundy. And every every time somebody says, Oh, he was so good looking, yeah. He fucks ever heads. So put makeup on him. Yeah. And he put kept him like on the fucking mantle yeah. and everything. And he'd like screw the heads and he keep try to keep him in a refrigerator. Yeah, he's keep gross as shit. He's gross as shit. <laughs> put him up on a mantle. Didn't he, wasn't he the mantle putter? Or was that the other guy? Yeah, he was a man that's what he I just said. He's a mantle he's a mantle, mantle, mantle putter. putter. Yeah. Is that he's a mantle, a mantle putter? Yeah, put it up on it. Yeah, let's keep that. And then we can just yeah. pull it down whenever we yeah, want. Well, it's kind of like it's kind of like the shoe fetish thing. Okay, 
I got a shoe fetish, but I got to have the woman. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, you don't some just d- want the shoes. You well, don't the, want the shoe, but well, there's the, some dudes that are so bad, they just want the shoe. Well, like, there comes a point, I guess. Yeah, you don't if, need it, a woman anymore. Well, it's all, it's all on a spectrum, right? Because, right, it's like, yeah. if you have a thing where it's like, oh, I like the way women's feet look, look in the shoe. The way it makes it. Eventually, just one notch look, further yeah. than that, it's like, just, well, I don't even need the fuck woman. Fuck that woman, man. Just get in the shoe. Because they're, all, you know, they're always bitching and like yeah, wanting yeah, things and having that's their right. own personalities and whatnot. Yeah, I can't deal with that. I just, I just money. want cost the money. shoe. You gotta take them out. Yeah, gotta shoe, them out. shoe's not just gonna shoe answer you back. Enough. Shoe's good enough. But know? shoe's not yeah. gonna answer. Shoe's good enough. Just the shoe. And then like, <laughs> well, that's that's what fucking Bundy was all about. You know what I mean? He liked head, literally. And he's like, well, I don't really need a woman. I just need the head. That's the only part of him that's any good anyway. Well, it's more portable. Yeah. You know what I mean? A lot it, easier. It, isn't just, that just fucked up? Like, head. from a practical standpoint, though, that's, yeah. that's absolutely correct. It's a correct. lot easier to just take the head. Yeah, because dead you bodies the head are in heavy. Bag, and then you fucking, we, and, and then you can keep that in the refrigerator. And, and so, you know, one homicide will yield maybe weeks of fucking entertainment until you get sick of that or it starts, it's too, it's too, it's too, it's not fresh anymore. It's too rotten. Not rotten, but yeah, it starts to spoil. So you go, ah. She's she's no good. Now I now. need a new one. I used her up. Yeah, she's got to go. And then you know it's like that. That's what he's doing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm just thinking of all the. Yeah, washing it off in the sink. Yeah, that's what I was hair, just thinking of. Make the hair pretty again. Put makeup. He put makeup on it. Just like one of those like. Yeah. Remember when you were a little? If you were a little girl in the '70s, you had one of those like Barbie. Yeah. Makeup things, and yeah. it was just like the head. Uh-huh. Well, there was a little bit of a neck to it. it. wasn't like It wasn't like horror movie shit. Right. But it was. It was kind of had a tray, and then it came with all these little like cosmetics, and you could put that. Then you could fix her hair and shit. You got the sensation of presence. You know the sensation that she's there. You know. Some weird shit. Very weird shit. That's some perversion there. No, you don't yeah, say. Yeah, that's some perversion there. God damn, I'm so glad yeah. that fucker's dead. Yeah. What a fucking creep. And he got away with so much because he yeah. was, like, normal looking. Yeah. I don't even want to say good looking. He wasn't. But he was just, like, normal he just looking. Normal. He didn't look like he a... He didn't look like a threat. He didn't look like a serial killer. He didn't... He but did... a lot of them don't. Well, yeah, none of them really look like a serial killer, but most of them look like worms. I've he, seen he some people like... that I thought that looked yeah. like a serial killer. <laughs> Gary, Ridgway, Gary Ridgway didn't look like a serial killer. If he, he just looked like a worm. He looked like some dude that you worked with, and he's just like a non-entity. You know what I mean? Somebody that you wouldn't notice. Your eyes are great. Now, if he'd had a damn personality, maybe he, you, you know what I mean? You'd be like, yeah, yeah, I like that guy. He's cool. But no, Gary Ridgway didn't have a fucking personality at all. You just didn't have one. Well, and we've talked and about this lots a, of times because right. I feel like, especially dudes in the, you know, yeah. incel community. He wasn't um, an incel, though. He was married. No, I'm just saying that Yeah. what I was going to say was that a lot of dudes that are kind of into that kind of shit are always just like, oh, women, they're so shallow and they just want, to, you know, if you're ugly or you don't have money or something like that. And I'm like, that's a bunch of bullshit. All you need to, you had, you need to have a good personality. Well, there's a lot of shit involved. I, I've looked at the so-called incel fucking uh, phenomenon. And it's kind of blown out of proportion. Yeah, you did have some dudes that could kind of fit that um, description who, say, like, did mass shootings and stuff. You know, like that one guy. You know what I mean? But those guys are very rare. And most in- incels are not like that. Um, especially, especially if, you know, fucking um, Anglo-American type incels. Most of them are just, they're not a threat. When they get online, they talk a lot of shit. The thing is about their th- the problem with with most of them is their thinking. Like no, you said, you don't say. Well, don't, <laughs> give me a chance. Don't give me a chance. Stop the misandry. <laughs> All right. The, the they talk about how women are shallow and they're only after them for their fucking money. They're only like men. You know, they only want men for their money and their looks, and they're only looking for Chad and this and that. Look, man, you got to turn that shit back in on yourself and go look at yourself. They the never wi- do that, though. The though. women that you're looking at are the fucking top echelon fucking women, okay? They're going to go for top echelon guys, guys that ha- have a lot to offer. Or what can you offer that woman? You know, They mean? never ask you, themselves that ask question, them that. though. And, and it's because it requires effort. But they never seem to require any effort. They don't go on a diet. They don't, go, they don't fucking go to the gym. They don't do self-development. They don't fucking. Um, well, they don't have any like. Try to, try, they don't try to improve themselves. Right. They, they don't. They don't. 
go out and have adventures and build character. They don't do the shit. They don't ever fucking even pursue a fucking career. You know what I mean? What are you going to offer this? Yeah, month? just do something that makes you interesting. Yeah, they, you know. That's so, all you have to do. So they never, but then they want a top echelon woman. Well, they want all, they want everything without having to without do having anything to, do anything. to get it. Right. That's the problem. Like, that's entitlement. Her, that's she, entitlement. I want you to look like this and that, and you want to love me. And then look at you and I said, dude, man, you're fucking 60 pounds overweight. You can't, you, you don't can't have a impose job. all of these, right. you know, restrictions yeah. on the people that you're going to, oh, they have to be a fucking yeah. 10. Yeah. When you look like that, yeah. or it doesn't even matter if you, it's like that yeah. you're not even making an effort. Not making an effort to like be like cool, like a cool person. Yeah. Now that at one, all. now that one dude who was weird as shit. Who Elliot Rogers? Yeah. I I would say okay. Now look, you guys always want to talk about mini me. Mini me was looked like that kind of. The one that had yeah, the yeah a, li a little bit yeah. He was he was a little he bit. was that size and that build. Yeah yeah. And that uh, he didn't have a face like that. But he was at that level. But he had a lot. He had a lot more outgoing personality. But he had a lot of weird quirks to him. Yeah, quirky. He, that, he, that's he that's was, the nicest way we can. Yeah, play. he's quirky. He was cool <laughs> at first, but then the more you got to know him, the the more it was just too goddamn much. He was a little. Um, he thought he, he grasping. Thought, yeah, he 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 thought you owed him something all the time. Yeah, and yeah. like I said, that's a problem. Right. And and honestly, like he didn't have a lot of the problems that you know some people have. Like he had he had a job. He had uh, lots of girlfriends. He had lots of girlfriends. He's yeah. you know a decent looking dude. Yeah. He dressed nice. Yeah. Um. Stuff he could like dance. that. Yeah. He you know so he had he, lot, he had a lot going. For so him, he actually. wasn't like a loser. He was just weird. Yeah, he was just a little weird. Weird, 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 weird. And he was just like kind of a lot to put up with because he was like real spazzy. Yeah, yeah. So like he was like right. for old people like me, it was like kind of right. tiring to the, be around. But the, the problem, <laughs> the problem with Elliot Rogers, all right, in the whole incel thing is first of all, Elliot Rogers wasn't a common incel. Elliot Rogers was mentally, uh, fucking ill. You could, I could tell just by the yeah, fucking, big time. I could just tell by what he was saying. He was mentally ill. He had a manifesto. Uh, Anybody that had yeah. the manifesto, yeah. run as far as you can away from think, that person. I think, he, <laughs> I think he had some kind of an some kind of a weird form of autism. That's what it seemed like. It was like sexual autism. Sexual autism. That's what I'm gonna put. It's like sexual chocolate. It's like <laughs> some kind of sexual autism. Sexual. All right. He he did all the things you were kind of supposed to so, do. Well, I think that was. But it was like a robot doing it. Yeah. It wasn't like a real person. It was very robotic. And he didn't really have a character. He was pretending to have a character. Or not even really pretending to have a t character. He was pretending to be an attractive guy. He wasn't Yeah, that's a good guy. way of putting it. Because he yeah. did, like, look, I have... Yeah. Well, and I think he even said that, like, in the video, where yeah. he was just like, look, I have really nice clothes, I have a really expensive car, I have this, that, and the other thing, and girls still don't like me. And I'm like... That should have told you something right there that there's yeah. something else the matter with you. Right. Most most incels are not like that. Most incels uh, just make no effort. That's most of them. But they just, want everybody else to make an effort. They want everybody to them. come to them, but they don't. They sure. Make no effort. Another version of incels is that they come from a certain part of a world where women are off limits to them. They only women only go to the high echelon men. Of course, we're talking about the Middle East, where some dudes can have two, three wives. And, you know, it's always, you know, the top, the top 30% of women are all always in every society running to the top fucking 10% of the guys. So these incel dudes ignore all ugly women. They just ignore them. They're only looking at the hot ones. Those hot ones are all taken. Well, you got to fight what I'm for saying. those. Yeah. The thing about yeah. it is that, you know, you, they could probably find if they just acted if normal, normal for five they could, seconds. Yeah, they could get a pretty You could one. find a girlfriend. You could, yeah. It's like, yeah, she might not look like a fucking supermodel. Right. You could find, you could find a good one. But, you know. Yeah, yeah. She might be totally and awesome. And also, you got to ask yourself, what is good? If she's good to you, she's nice to you. She helps you out. You have a good relationship with her. You can, she's, she, you can have sex with her. In other words, there's enough attraction to where you can, you can have sex with her. You know what I mean? That just worry about that. It's I mean, that's what most people. That's what most people are doing. Are doing. D don't worry about these fucking women that you're seeing in these fucking porn videos or these fucking chicks on fucking Instagram who are making money as Instagram models. They got thousands of dudes fucking competing with that. You think you're gonna be able to get that? No, no, no. 
Not by living in your mom's basement, fucking 40 pounds overweight, no job. No. And like you said, it's nothing no. to do with like being fair or anything like it's that. Not it's not about fairness. This is biology. Fair. Yeah. This is biology. I mean, well, you know. Jenny went out with me and shit wasn't fair. She said, he's different than these other guys. Is that fair? No, it's not fair. I was taking advantage. It's, you were taking advantage? I was taking advantage. That's the strategy. <laughs> I'm going to fucking dress better and dance better and fucking, you know what I mean? And I'm a good dude and I'm going to fucking have friends with all these people and everybody's, you know, and this and that. And and I never tried to fucking go pick up women. It just happened. Yeah, it well, just happened. you never really had to try to. Because, well, trying. the thing about it that I think a lot of people like about you, yeah. and the, you know, even is that I didn't really care. I'm just having fun with people. Well, and and you had a lot of female friends. Yeah. And you were not banging them. No, no. And no. you were not really. You just thought they were cool people. They're, they're people. And you just hung out with yeah, them. Yeah, they're people. And you weren't trying to get in their pants. No. And I think that a lot of women appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. But the thing is, is you know, I, I I like I like beautiful women, especially well, yeah, if especially if they're cool. But a beautiful woman, if she's if she if she's fucking crazy, you're like you know who I'm talking about. Well, I've dated some of them. They're crazy. They don't last long. You're like uh, I know exactly. Yeah, yeah, I, I know a couple people like, that you're, you're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> this ain't gonna work. You're kind of a piece of shit. And, <laughs> and and look, straight up honesty to you young guys who might be listening to me, I got pictures to prove it. I've fucking been with the best looking ones fucking ever, especially when I was even younger. Okay, fucking uh, tens. 12s. No, no, no. 12s. All right. 15s. 20s. 200s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ones that I really didn't fucking, there was no way, I, I wasn't even good looking enough for them and they were just, that's how good looking they were, right? Especially in Brazil and stuff. Um, A lot of times the better looking they are, the more of a piece of shit they are. A lot of times. Because they, yeah, they tend not, to skate on their looks. Well, yeah. They skate on I, their I looks. I mean, I'm not going to say, because like I said, generalizations are always yeah. kind of Very bullshit. much general but very much so um you know that little because that laura you, is gorgeous and she's cool as shit yeah laura and i looks like some, i have woman. met a lot yeah, yeah. of yeah i mean just yeah. amazingly beautiful women yeah that were just like the most awesome people. yeah yeah they're and it's like there. not even fair they're out there i know a lot of women yeah. like that most of my female friends are like that our friend laura and i got pictures to prove and I'm, i've been friends with laura for fucking 10 years all right laura looks like Fucking Wonder Woman. She makes me cry how pretty she yeah. is. Yeah, all right. She, she, <laughs> um, she's cool as she, she is. just ridiculous. She's pretty, and she pretty, is pretty the cool coolest, yeah. sweetest. Yeah. There is I'm not you guys there is not a bitch bone in no. her body at all. And she's she is just like the sweetest person. Yeah. And super uh, honest. Honest and just like good. Yeah, she's awesome. Like a good person. I'm me and her and Jen went and had uh, yeah. coffee. Right. Not too long ago. A couple months ago. But yeah, she's like the coolest person. So yeah. don't think, yes, there is some truth to, you know, that like joke chart that people made where it's like the, the hot crazy continuum. Yeah, that's only a certain time. Um, which to some extent, yes, um, because like I said, the hotter a girl is, usually she can get by on her looks, but that's yeah. not always the case. Yeah. That's not always the case. There's Jen and it's Laura. Laura and Jen. Laura, Laura's go this one. Jen, we're going to go see Jen. We'll see them actually. tonight. That's Laura. I don't think Laura's coming out, but Jen All right. is. Yeah. All right. So I got pictures to prove that shit. That girl is such a good person. I mean, you know what I mean? She's real genuine and real trustworthy and just heart of gold. Just a, a very good person. So you can't use bro logic. Like, oh, she's, a, you know. Oh, you know, you can't trust her. You know, it's not like she, that. Yeah, it's like, oh, she's so pretty, she must be. Yeah, she's so pretty. Like, not, no, you know, not at all. it's not like that at all. Not at all. It's not like that at all. Yeah. You know, like I said, you have to take each person as an individual. It's not kind of like, yeah, yeah, you can make certain generalizations, but yeah, uh, you know, up to a certain extent. But after a certain time, it's like generalizations kind of break down because everybody's an individual, obviously. Yeah. Um, you know, like I said, and honestly. I can't even think of any because I, you know, I have a lot of female friends. I have a lot of male friends, but uh, it's, my female friends are they're all good. gorgeous. Yeah. And all of them are awesome people or yeah. I wouldn't be friends with them. Right. Because, you know, I have some uh, enemies that are also gorgeous yeah. people that are terrible. Oh, Sandra. Terrible Sandra people. Called, she goes, that's Rose the Hat. Yes, that is Rose that's the Hat. That's what we thought when we saw. When we, we saw I was like, oh, my God, it's Laura. So it looks like Laura. Because yeah. she had a hat. She has a hat just like that. Yeah, she she had a hat like that before that fucking movie. Before the movie came out. And she looked just like Laura. Then when we saw it in the theater, that was when yeah. we both like turned to each other and said, yeah. oh, my God, it's Laura. Yeah. The, yeah, it looked just like her. She, she's not evil, though. Laura's yeah. not evil. <laughs> yeah, she, she's actually a really rad person. She just like she messaged me the other day, but 
She said she's going to be coming back out, but it's going to be a little while. But Jen will be out tonight, though. Yeah. Because Dimitri's DJing the Vampire Ball. Um, you know, among other people. <laughs> Filthy Garden. So Tom once dated Pamela Anderson. For real? Just trust me, okay? Uh, I, yeah, my first wife was fucking built like that, and she looked fucking great. Yeah, bit the big bolt-ons and everything. The bolt-ons. The big bolt-ons, yeah. And that was during I like that. that. It makes me feel like Frankenhooker. No, we talk about, no, no, no. Bolt-ons. When you call them bolt-ons, it is, I'm just like, no. oh, having the. You no. don't have bolt-ons. Bolt, <laughs> a bolt-on, a bolt. Okay. No, a I, I, I get it. You, but it's you just have like implants, funny. but it's more like an internal. You had big boobs before. I did, yeah. A bolt-on is when you get a fucking hundred-pound girl, hundred ten-pound girl who's fucking got no body fat, and you put giant fucking implants in her, and they just look like spheres, and you can tell that they were just kind of bolted on to yeah, her they're not natural it gives you that fucking fake bimbo look which is it's sexy it's it, it's a fetish kind of kink to it and pam anderson made that look kind of popular because there's no way a woman of that fucking body would have would have boobs like, like that. that of that shape that, that doesn't is totally impossible <laughs> totally impossible but the fakeness is what kind of gives that look it's Beauty is not natural. Beauty is artificial. It's always yeah, been, tell me about it's it. It's always been body <laughs> modification. Putting bowls in your lips, earrings, stretching out fucking earlobes to put big rings in it. It's tattoos. Uh, fucking, you know what I mean? Tribal people, and we're still tribal. Admit it or not, we're still tribal. Tribal people have always done body modifications to achieve beauty. Every culture. Foot binding. You break a damn girl's foot, fold it under, and make a little tiny foot out of it. Ridiculous shit. Bitch can't even walk. But a guy will fucking... Bitch can't even walk. Bitch can't walk. But a dude will fucking spend all of his fucking gold to keep his man, her in tiny his feet. stable. To just because a little bitty foot. It's ridiculous. I have tiny but, feet and they're natural. Natural tiny feet. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Okay, but the fucking... The fucking Resting is big, but my feet are small. Tiny, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, I've seen those shoes like in museums. I've seen the pictures. Yeah. It's because the toes are all folded under because they, they wrap them and your foot just sticks yeah. like that. So it's like a little pointy. You have like one little pointy toe in the front. Like a, Yeah. It's fucked up. And like you said, they can't really walk. They they can sort of, but they sort of hobble. Yeah. You know what I mean? So my people tattoo their faces. We don't know what your people are, but must be more Mo- or nobody they call them. Uh, Maori. Yeah, maybe. Tattoo tattoo this. I mean, more than one does that, but that was yeah. the first thing I thought of. Somebody said, I mean, yeah. Somebody said, Tom's a man. All young guys should aspire to be him. I mean, don't, don't <laughs> tell them that. Don't fucking tell them that. Because fucking my life wasn't perfect, man. Nobody's perfect. Everybody just I do, had gotten a lot of trouble. And do did, your own did shit. Did a lot man. of stupid shit. Do your own shit. shit. And paid heavy prices for Don't fucking, follow anybody. It's a heavy price do to your be Tom. Shit. It's a fucking heavy price to be Tom. But now, uh, it's, now look at me playing the world's smallest violin. Yeah, 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 yeah. But now, now I'm bringing this all to y'all. If I can make on the show. <laughs> oh my god! Did you know? You know, Stallone lives down here, man. I'm gonna run into Stallone. I'm gonna do a video with Stallone. You gonna run into him in Starbucks one day? He's gonna be around here one of these days. One he lives around here, evidently. Everybody does. <laughs> no, word word is he lives off of fucking Markham Woods Road. Well, a lot of people do so. So that's just right here. I'm if I see Stallone, I'm gonna fucking jump out and fucking take a take a video with him. He's got several houses here. I'm sure he'll be thrilled. They say, what's that? Yeah, I'm sure he'll be thrilled. Yeah, you know, who's this guy? Who's this guy? I'm your biggest fan. No, I ain't just I'm don't not, do that. I'm don't not do a that. fan. Be cool. Yeah. You will. I'm not a fan. You're not gonna like fangirl. I'm a out. dude. I'm a dude. I'm not a fan. He's gonna be all cool. I can't shit. wait till we go out tonight. I'm fucking sick of this shit, man. Who's that? <laughs> I haven't even like gone to my fucking shit yet. And honestly, it's only like, dude, it's not even. It's six thirty. I know. We don't have to leave for like two and a half hours. The chest is feeling good. Is I had it? my injection this morning. I just injected him. This yeah. Morning. Starting to come in. This is why he's getting all. Yeah. All head up about. I need to hit something. Hit something. I'm gonna hit something tonight. Not on the show. Oh, this no. is live. No, we're we going to get demonetized. We're going to monetize this. We're going to monetize We're going to open up a OnlyFans. <laughs> oh, my God. You're going to have to pay 500 to get into OnlyFans. No, we're not. Okay, stop it. Stop. <laughs> it's, it's pulling me. It's pulling me down that direction. No, we're not doing it. We've thought about doing that before, but yeah, I'm just kind of like, That was a long time know. ago now. I don't know. I think I'd be too self-conscious. You know? 
I could I could I could cure that. I could cure mm, that. I don't we, know. We wouldn't be live. We didn't get edited. Even so, it's yeah. like even if I edit it, I'm like, well, oh my god, look at everything. that! Look at that! Oh my god! Yeah. Well, you know how it's, you know, and somebody was saying that earlier. It's like women are very, like, critical of themselves. Yeah, they worry too much. And they, and they worry about the wrong things. Like, you know what I mean? It's Never mind. I don't want to get involved in it. Because then it'll start a fight. Because they're critical of themselves, but they're critical about... The, the, when they get critical about themselves, they're actually critical about a feature that guys would tend to like. But then they're totally blissfully unaware of certain things that guys tend not to like because you know uh, uh female beauty is is perceived very differently from the eyes of, of of guys than it is with women you know what i'm talking about and it's, it goes the same way with men you know what i mean yeah what men a lot of times aspire to and what they fucking think is cool is man i'd like to do what that guy's doing i like to i like to have that arm that that guy has or that dude's shoulders man i want to build a shoulder like that women don't even give shit about that not usually no no I mean, depends I like, on the, like I said, I don't like to make generalizations, about? but yeah, you know, yeah, it depends on the women. I think c certain women have to have it that way. They do, but I think, like I said, and again, I'm generalizing, but right. again, a lot of women are like they're kind of more worried about what you're like as yeah. a person. Well, that's to, for granted. That take that for granted. You have to be yeah. cool. You know what I mean? You have to be. Like, that's is just, that a cool person? Because like, like I said, you could be the hottest shit in the world, but if you're an yeah, asshole, but, then. Yeah, but the pyramid's upside down. You have to start off being cool. And then what you look like is what you're adding on top of that. Well, yeah, that's lot, what I mean. Lot, you, have you, cool. you have like, to be cool. That's like that's like a baseline. That's the baseline. That's a baseline. But you see, a lot of times, this is a lot of these dudes that get into fitness and shit and sports. They weren't even cool to begin with. Well, they're with. compensating. Yeah, they weren't cool to begin with. So then they start doing weird shit and they start getting stronger and faster. They look great, but as soon as you open their mouth, you're like, man, you're a fucking douche. Yeah, Fuck bye. <laughs> this is just probably the way to do that. But they weren't all like that. I hooked up. Remember, I've told stories that says, yeah, Grampers was on here. We were talking about Grampers was we we were talking about back in the day, you know, and jocks and shit. And I said, yeah, but remember how fucking McCormick was. Yeah, we didn't really hang. I didn't really hang out with jocks, but I liked fucking McCormick. He was a, a, um, a hockey player. All right. And I liked him. He, you could consider him a jock, but he was very open minded and he uh, was fucking big, good looking guy and fucking would hang out with fucking like the punk rock girls that, you know, and the girls that like fucking, you know, uh, early, you know, goth and stuff. And, you know, he'd smoke a little bit of weed and fucking out at the campfires and shit like yeah, that. Just we were doing. Out, man. He was just like everybody else. Just and and the average jock when we were in high school couldn't do that. They were too mentally limited. Yeah, tell me about but it. But fucking McCormick was cool. He was just a cool dude. I liked him. I knew some like sort of jock adjacent people that yeah. were cool. But yeah. in, in the main, I was not a big fan of jocks in school yeah. because for exactly the reason that you just said. Yeah. yeah. They weren't all like that. So I didn't really have... Yeah, they weren't. I, knew, I, I, I had I some friends. I didn't really like have that bad taste in my mouth because uh, we did hung, hang out with some cool ones. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was, and then the, the ones that were assholes, though from that scene were the betas of that scene. They weren't the alphas. They were the betas. They well, were because trying, they had something to lose. They, they, were, trying they, to... they were trying to... They were trying impress and overcompensate right. and shit. And that was the betas. Overcompensation. That's yeah. always a bitch. You yeah. gotta watch out for that. All right, let's get back to the show, man. We have 61, <laughs> 61 people in there watching. We've got a good... We're having a good response. Yeah, there we go. Uh, Dario okay. says the heroin just kicked in. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Damn. All right. Yeah. Well, you'll probably be asleep. Dario says, big feet on women. I love it. You'd love Brazil, man. You'd like fucking Brazil, uh, fucking travesti, which is fucking tra transsexuals. Because the only way you could tell them apart from a woman is, first of all, back in these back in those days, me growing up there, if she was too fucking pretty, she was probably a transsexual. And, and you had to check. You had to look down at the feet. If the feet were big, you go, yeah, yeah, that's that's a that we, we would say it's a you guy. didn't you didn't check the Adam's apple. No, because they, a lot of times they didn't go through male puberty, so they didn't have that. Mm. Okay, because they were taking hormones before puberty to transform into it. So they didn't have Adam's apple. The only thing you could tell is that their their feet tended to be a little bit bigger than, than say, a, what do you call them? What would they say? We would call, say a guy's foot. But nowadays, they go, no, it's got to be a biological male. Yeah, if, if they were born a biological male, they their feet feet were going to be a little bit bigger than a biological Although I've female. known some women with some big ass feet. Yeah, that too. That too. But so that's, was, I, I don't think that's the, the only way you were really going to know is reach down grab. 
That's what I'm okay, saying. Okay, it was going to be too late if you did that. I told many fucking stories. And if <laughs> you got, late. and if you yeah, guys, if you got to the point where you're like grabbing someone, yeah, it's too late. You're going to look. You're doing it whether you want to or not. <laughs> it's going to be fucking very rude. You know what I mean? <laughs> and if you got, if y'all don't believe me, shit, I'll pull up. I got pictures to prove that shit. Just look up fucking Bruno Butterfly, and that's one of the new. They looked like that. All right, they didn't look like transsexuals. They looked like girls. I mean, they were all right. <laughs> trying to get me to fucking prove shit because you really don't really though? see this in the united states too much but in the time that i was there in the 80s the number one top supermodel was a woman named R roberta Closi or roberta close c-l-o-s-s-e -S -S was how it was spelled roberta Closi, a roberta Closi was her name and she was a supermodel she was she was um biologically male okay but so that shit's been going on since the fucking well, 70s forever. in Brazil. Yeah. I'm going to show you Roberta. Hob okay. Jen says, hey, is a bio girl with size 11 feet. <laughs> That's what I mean. I've not, I've no girl with like size. Oh my good. Oh my goodness. Pookie. Pookie, stop. I wear a size six or seven. Depends on the shoe. My feet are like small, but they're wide. So I always have to get like those like size six, but wide. I have to get those. Okay. Which is dumb because I have like big, huge, fat legs, but then like tiny, tiny feet at the bottom. Here is Roberta Closi. Back, back when I was there in the 80s. Okay. Oh my so, goodness, the string of pearls. So if you me. saw somebody who was that pretty, it was probably a biological whale. Okay. Now, <laughs> just walking around. Hold on one second. I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you what, what it's like now. What is your deal, Pookie? Yeah. Well, why are you yelling? She's talking. She's like, yeah. man. She probably wants to go outside. Sit in the point. That's brown a butterfly. Let me see. See if I can. Tarantino loves lady feet. He does. He has a foot fetish. He loves all the feet in the movies. I didn't like notice it until I until recently. <laughs> Okay. That, that was very common there. It's all good. Yeah. We're all humans. Yeah. Don't worry about it. <laughs> well, it's a very macho culture. Uh, being gay was like second tier. You didn't really want to be gay. So if you were gay, the better option would be to become female. I could see that. But, yeah. you know, like I said, it's, it's, it's one of those. What is she doing? What you doing, Pook? All right. Can I get back to my show? Yeah, now? yeah. Let me put the Pook outside. Yeah, Pook, Pook she, outside. Yeah, she's going, yes, take me out. Does she ever? Does she have her clothes on? No, I'm going to put them on. I call them her clothes. <laughs> That's her collar. She has to put the collar on or she's going to go sit on the porch. I don't want somebody kidnapping her. But yeah, I call them her clothes, though. All right, so uh, I don't even remember where I was. Okay, so we're still, still talking about uh, this girl that got abducted while she was babysitting, which, like I said, it sounds like a fucking horror movie, which maybe... I kind of feel like maybe some of these horror movies about babysitter shit was maybe based on something like this. Cause this happened in the fifties. So she, so basically she's in the house studying. The baby is sleeping upstairs. The baby's fine. Was still asleep. Didn't wake up during this whole ordeal, whatever it was. Somebody or some buddies came into the basement window, came up to the living room and dragged this girl out of the house through the window. Apparently there's blood everywhere. So they got some bloodhounds. They uh, traced Evelyn's scent for two blocks and then they lost the trail, you know, a couple blocks away. Uh, so they imagined that, you know, she probably got put in a car at this point. So when the police came and they kind of like, you know, canvassed the neighborhood or whatever, one neighbor said, uh, I saw a light colored car circling the neighborhood about 8 p.m. Um, another person that lived in the neighborhood said they heard screaming about 7 p.m. but didn't really think that much of it because they just thought it was kids playing. Um, obviously, you wouldn't think about it until later. So they think that sometime around 7, 7.30 was when Evelyn was abducted. Now, two days after she disappeared, uh, another dude that lived in the neighborhood, his name was Ed Hofer. Now, he came forward and he said that about 7.15 that night, he almost hit a two-toned green 1941 or 1942 Buick, which was speeding 
uh, in a westward direction. He said that he saw two men and a girl inside. One of the dudes was driving. The other was in the back seat with the girl. The girl was slumped forward with her head leaning against the front seat, which he thought was unusual, which is why he noticed it. Now, he said that even before he saw the car, he'd seen uh, the two guys and her kind of staggering down the street near where they later found some of the blood. Now, he didn't think anything about it at the time because he said, oh, well, maybe, you know, they're drunk or something else and they're going to the homecoming game, which pretty much everyone in town was, which, you know, that's where he was going at the time too. So we didn't think anything weird about it. Um, and obviously at the time that it happened, nobody knew that this girl that had been babysitting was being kidnapped. So, you know, um, this dude, I don't think they even like released his name until like 50 years later. So they didn't know he was just like a witness, but now they know what his name is. Now, a couple days after Evelyn disappeared, they found uh, a pair of underwear and a bra uh, that might have been hers. They're not entirely sure. They found them near the underpass on Highway 14, about two miles south of La Crosse, Wisconsin. Uh, these were also stained with blood. Now, about four miles away, they also found a bloodstained pair of men's pants on the same road, but they don't know if this is connected to the case or not. They also found a pair of size 11 bloodstained Goodrich sneakers uh, in the Coon Valley area, southeast of La Crosse, Wisconsin. Uh, these were apparently dumped there only a short time before they were discovered. Now, the soles of them had a, um, had a pattern that was very similar to the footprints that had been found in the house where Evelyn had been abducted from. Uh, and the blood that was found on the shoes was also the same type as hers. So they think that maybe these shoes had been worn by one of her abductors. Um, inside one of the shoes, they found a single human hair. They couldn't determine much about the person. That It possibly could have been an African-American man, but they're not entirely sure. So it was inconclusive, the test. They, uh, so authorities consulted, consulted the Goodrich company uh, and said that this particular like style of shoe was called hood mogul which what the fuck kind of name is that i don't, I don't know, know. The, she wouldn't go outside it's the 50s she wouldn't go outside oh she just wanted to fuck she went with to you. one door and then the other door and then went back to no the other changed door. my mind yeah, 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 yeah. She, she went to three doors and said no to each one i think she thinks that every single door leads to a different, a different outside. outside yeah so she's like well i don't like this outside let's try this other exactly outside. no exactly. this is not working for me yeah, either temperature isn't right on this one let's go to the other one yeah, it's exactly what she's doing. Also, I think yeah. that she thinks that we control the, the yeah. weather. So. Yeah, she's like, turn it down. No. It's like, it's too hot. Out. So what yeah, are you, why are you guys crazy. doing this to me? It's crazy. I don't understand you humans. Mm -hmm. Make it colder. I get it, Pokey. I get it. We can't yeah. do anything about it, though. I'm sorry. But yeah, so uh, so this shoe, which, like I said, this is the 1950s. So shoe is called Hood Mogul, which, I don't know. That that's just sounds very funny to me, particularly from the 1950s. So this particular uh, shoe was sold in Wisconsin, obviously, Iowa, Michigan, Minnesota, and Illinois. Now they think that whoever owned this pair of shoes was like probably worked in a factory, was a mechanic or worked with some type of machinery, something like that. Um, also, and I'm, this is very specific, but they said that the pattern of wear on the shoes suggested that the person that wore them frequently operated a Whizzer motorbike. I guess because of the way that the shoes are maybe on the pegs or whatever. I don't know how they could determine that. 1953, but they're apparently pretty sure about it. Another weird thing is that they thought that maybe two different people had worn these shoes because the wear patterns were like kind of different. Like they're because they thought because of witness statements that it was it had probably been two abductors um, because uh, somebody saw like a car with two dudes in it with the girl that they think was her. So maybe this other person wore these other shoes and they weren't the right size. Like the shoes were too big for him. You know what I mean? So they think that that happened too. I don't know why this dude switched shoes with the other kidnapper, whatever. Within 800 feet of the shoes, they found a well-worn size 36 blue denim jacket with metallic buttons and blood stains on the front, back and sleeves. The jacket also had some base metal paint flecks on it. Again, uh, you know, probably this person worked with some machinery, worked in some kind of mechanic shop or something. The jacket had been cut off at the bottom and roughly rehemmed with white thread. One of the button, one of the four buttons was missing. There was a worn mark running the entire width of the jacket under the armpits, possibly from a safety harness, which they thought was uh, kind of interesting. 
They also found some fibers uh, like those that were that come out of the of a scrub brush. They found those in the pocket. Now the blood on the jacket was Evelyn's uh, blood type, and the blood smears found at the house she was taken from were made by cloth with the characteristics of denim. So somebody thinks that maybe she had bled in the house and somebody used the jacket to like maybe wipe some shit up or something like that. Um, so the jacket though was too small, they thought, for somebody that was wearing some size 11 shoes because they thought that was probably a bigger person. Uh, so they think, this is, this was, I had to look this up. It says one investigator concluded based on the pattern of wear on the jacket, the way it was cut off, that whoever owned it worked as a steeplejack. And I was like, what the fuck? I've heard that word before, but I didn't know what it was. I was like, what the fuck is a steeplejack? A steeplejack is a person who climbs tall structures such as chimneys and steeples in order to carry out repairs. So they think that whoever did it worked a job like that because that was the way they cut their jacket, I guess, to make things easier to climb up of things. I don't know. So this particular kidnapping sparked one of the largest searches in Wisconsin history. So they did mass searches of local vehicles, lie detector tests to all the students and teachers at Evelyn's school, because like I said, she was a teenager. They took the shoes and the jacket to 31 different towns around the area, displayed them to an estimated 10,000 people, but nobody recognized them. And they had a bunch of suspects questioned over the years, no evidence to implicate anyone. Now, some people, as I mentioned earlier, have suggested that maybe Ed Gein was responsible for this shit. Although I have to say this doesn't, entirely sound like his mo he was active uh in this area in this time period but and yeah he did kill two women but his deal was mostly one the two women he killed middle-aged women like you know bar owners tavern keepers most of the shit he did grave robin you know hmm. um so i don't know i'm not saying that ed Gein didn't do this shit uh, because he was kind of active in the area, but this really doesn't sound like something that he would do. But I'm just saying, there was another one that happened a little bit later in this same area, and some people attribute that to Ed Gein as well. Um, and the thing about Ed Gein was that when Evelyn was kidnapped, Ed Gein was visiting relatives, and he was only a couple blocks away from her. So that's why people are thinking about that, you know? Yeah. What? Nothing. Oh, okay. I thought you looked like you were going to like start... No, I'm not saying anything. Pontificating about something. <laughs> oh, you want to pontificate about something? Well, you know, if you want to. All right. <laughs> Daria was going, that looks like a girl. We're talking about those, you know, uh, Bruna. All right, she's that yeah. like a girl. Well, yeah, that's kind of the point. I just find that shit fucking funny, what you have here in the United States with all these people going on about trans rights and all this fucking... Neat, and these are mostly people that are not trans. These are kids and these fucked up American kids. Talking about trans rights, and I just fucking laugh at this shit, okay? Because trans in Brazil didn't need rights. They had fucking privileges. They just did. Those girls there that look like that, okay? Dudes were fighting to get to those. They didn't want equality with women. They were, they had a fucking specialty, a niche. You know what I mean? Of being what they were. There's a special kind of guy trying to get to that. They only ended up with fucking rich dudes. You know what I mean? It's not like they were unpopular. So I just think that shit's funny. You know what I mean? That they need to have some kind of special protection. It's just, it's not the way it was. Not in Brazil. They were like geisha. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, they, well, no, if you went up there and says, you know, well, they were going, that's a woman. That's a woman. They wouldn't want to hear that. They were like, no, I'm trans. Because if they were women, then they'd lose all their fans. You know what I mean? They were that was a that was they were a lot more rare than a woman. It's a, I guess it's just a cultural difference. Yeah, that's exactly You know what I mean? So it's just I just think this shit's hilarious. Brazil's fucking was like forty years ahead of all that. They they, they don't have any issues like the like that, you know. All right, so where was I? Okay, so like I said, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think Ed Gein had anything to do with this. They did question him uh, about, uh, you know, the, the barmaid that disappeared that he did actually end up killing. And that's when they found, like, all the fucking Leatherface shit around his house. Like I said, Leatherface was based on him, in case you didn't know that. Um, but like I said, this climbing in someone's basement window, kidnapping them, leaving blood all over the yard, 
doesn't really sound like his thing, but I'm not saying, but you know, maybe he was branching out. I don't know, but that's, you know, now he, uh, was, uh, if you didn't know, was declared insane. We did a show about him, I think. And he died in a mental institution in mm. 1984. They did like search all his property and anything, but you know, obviously they didn't find any trace of Evelyn. And he said that he was not involved. Now he's also, uh, kind of thought about as a suspect in another, uh, abduction in the same area and this happened in 1947 and this was the abduction of georgia weckler now georgia weckler was actually a little girl she was not a teenager she was last seen near her farm home in rural fort atkinson wisconsin at about 3 30 p.m on may 1st 1947 now what ended up having she was in, thank you victor jenny said jenny 10 out of 10 tonight well yep. thank you very much I'm real. I'm digging this wig. Mm -hmm. It is kind of like going into my lipstick, though. So that's why you see me doing that. Because every now and then I get like this little string goes into my goes into my lipstick and sticks, and it's like annoying. I'm telling you, Jenny, <laughs> that girly shit looks good on you. It does, but like I yeah, said, sometimes when I'm doing the show, I just want to yeah. not have hair like sticking in my lipstick when I'm trying to talk. But you know what I mean. That's all. Oh, it's a price you have to pay to be pretty. Well, no shit. Yeah. I would know that better than anybody. Yeah, I'm telling you. Tom doesn't know. We no, I don't know. I said so one we of these days. You. One of these days, no. I told him, I'm like, you know, one night when we go out, you should put on full makeup, a wig, a corset, high heeled shoes. You're trying to get me to be do like all Crus that shit, like Crussell when he on that on, in that movie. Well, I'm just saying, just do all that shit, and then you'll understand why sometimes I'll be like, man, I'm just like, ugh. No, see, she I can't under, walk. She underestimates me. <laughs> she underestimates me. Fucking, if I probably if, if I fucking went to some kind of drag event where we're gonna fucking go to the club for drag night and fucking the women all got dressed like men and the men all just got dressed like women i'd be hot as fuck i could walk in all that shit well let's see it i could do it let's yeah see it. i'd have to practice well yeah Let, let's see practice. let's see you walk in my big i'm, a, ass I'm an ex-actor i could do that no problem okay yeah sure yeah female impersonation yeah i could do it yeah you think you could i would do look anything. fucking crazy though it would look crazy i'd have to get the fucking right kind of clothes to hide my fucking my build I'd look like that fucking transsexual we knew. What was her name? Oh man, I haven't seen her. In a haven't long seen time. her in a long time. Gosh, we were friends with this fuck. We were friends with a transsexual prostitute who would show up to the club. Like, I haven't seen her in years. Yeah. God she was, damn, where'd she go? She's probably in jail. She probably. is probably in jail. She's getting arrested all the time. She did get arrested. She was a bodybuilder. When she was a bodybuilding male, got fucking huge. All right, big arms, fucking just. Big, you know what I mean? The motherfucker did, was doing roids and everything, and became trans, and started wearing fucking little little fucking baby dolls and shit, little baby doll dresses and fucking heels and shit. <laughs> and it, and we're talking about a dude. Stop it, poop. She's. Big. We're talking about a dude that fucking you know size of Arnold, okay. At one time, he got a little smaller when he stopped fucking doing roids. He went from one extreme to the next, but he was doing growth hormone and shit, you know, which spaced his teeth out and everything, you know, because he had the gaps in between his teeth where his skull expanded. <laughs> he was cool though, man. He was fucking hilarious. And he, <laughs> he'd be hanging out with us in the club, trying, <laughs> he'd be talking about, I just got out of jail. When, when you got out of jail, what happened? He goes, Oh, they got me for prostitution again. And it's, oh shit, who are you she blowing? Was getting oh, I was blowing this old guy in the. I was blowing this old guy, in, you know, fucking in the alley. No, now I'm not do, saying anything bad about fucking trans people. Not all trans people are doing this. It was this particular dude. Okay. Stop it, Pope. What are you doing, Pookie? She's trying to dig through the goddamn books in the book here. Yeah, she's. It. She likes yeah. the noise that it makes. Yeah. You know. And yeah, and then what was funny, you know, what I mean, and and. Somebody would say some shit sideways to him every now and then, and he'd fucking lose it. And start crying, and then want to start fighting. And then they, the, these people were immediately re reminded that this was a 200 and something pound muscle bodybuilder. Yeah, he was in a dress. Yeah, he had long hair and women, women's fucking hair. He was a fucking ex bodybuilder. The motherfucker was as strong as an ox. Yeah, you'd knock your teeth out. You'd knock your fucking teeth out. <laughs> <laughs> Strong as a motherfucking ox. Probably bench. Dude that size usually benches about 500, maybe 550. I mean, he was fucking huge. Huge biceps. 
uh, you know, they, fucking Arnold claimed to have fucking benched, I think, close to 800 one time. I'm not sure I believe that. Yeah, that sounds a, That's a bit, lot. That sounds like bullshit to me. Yeah. I think it might have been more like 700, six, six something. But 500, 400. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> Arnold was pretty big. Those dudes lifted a lot. I know, but you know, they, they always kind of like, you know, self The kind of grand, 800 sure. and something, I think it was kind of high. But um, it depends on what he was on at the time, too. But uh, no. Yeah, he was transsexual, but that motherfucker would whip your ass. He was fucking huge. That's why he got away with a lot of shit that he did. And I don't understand who the customers were. There was nothing female about that dude. Nothing. Yeah, but some people like that. Yeah, like I said, a, the world is a complicated place. It's a complicated place. What'd you do? You just like I pulled a sound like a, something popped. Yeah, I pulled a damn. Um, it got caught up on my boot. Your shit is like you know. I pulled a rivet. Shit's popping of my, off your fucking clothes. It's okay. I'll find it. I'll put it back in there eventually. Mm -hmm. Pulled a rivet out of my pants. It was just that little trim piece right there. It got caught on my... It's fine. Yeah, it's going to be all right, Jenny. Don't worry about my clothes, all right? You worry about the show. Well, can I yeah. actually get back to it? Go ahead, or... get back to the fucking show. <laughs> I'll, I'll, go get, I'll, I'll get the, uh, I'll get the uh, flashlight and look for it. Because, see, that'll go right back in. Sure. I've had that happen before. Okay, okay, go ahead. Don't believe me. What are you talking about? J Jenny goes, sure. No, well, I mean... Okay, let me get the flashlight. Hold on. Don't believe you. I know it came out. I heard the noise. He's losing it. <laughs> Good thing we have two hours before we have to leave still. <laughs> so it's fine. All right. So where was I? So we was talking about uh, Georgia Weckler. So like I said, this is another one that happened in Wisconsin right around the time that Ed Gein was fucking around doing his grave robbing, whatever the fuck he did. Now, this was, like I said, a little girl. She was a third grader. So I'm assuming about seven, eight years old, something like that. Now, she was last seen uh, near her house, uh, which was, you know, it was a big farm. Rural Fort Atkinson, Wisconsin, about 3.30 p.m., May 1st, 1947. Now, what happened was she was a third grader at the Oakland Center School, and a neighbor gave her a ride part of the way home, dropped her off to the entrance of um, the driveway that went up to her house. Now, the driveway was like half a mile long, right? So the neighbor dropped her off at the, um, you know, at the opening to the driveway. Now... At this point, Georgia, little Georgia, gets out of the car and she says, oh, I think I'm going to go to the woods and pick some flowers for a May Day basket because, you know, it was May 1st. So normally what? What? Slayer, Slayer said Tom should go pantsless. <laughs> what kind of shit is this, man? With your little tiny butt. I don't know what he's talking like, about. Going like that. Where's Back up a little bit. Let me see if that's underneath there. Where the hell did that thing go? I don't know. I'm gonna blame you, Jenny. Of course you are. I'm, I'm, I'm to blame, blame for everything. You're gonna blame you, Jenny. I'm to blame for everything. That's oh, just how it works, dude. I'm trying to do a show. I was just looking down in here. Oh my god. Yeah, I was just looking down there. Okay, now I'll get back to the show. Thank you. Can, you. Can I? You can get back to the show. I'm like only halfway through. I can't through. find it. See, look. Yeah, I see it. See it? That sounds like a you problem. Ah. <laughs> These bitches. You do this shit like right. Nobody wants to watch you doing that shit. No, I'm just okay, before I forget. Yeah, you back. Well, that's your own fault. I'm, I'm, yeah. I mean, I'm sure I'll get the blame, but okay. it's your fault. So yeah, so uh, yeah, so where was I? So, so this little girl, she says she's gonna go out in the woods and get some flowers. Now, normally, her and her little siblings would have ridden their bicycles to school, but because the weather had been so shit the last few days, had been like really rainy and everything was muddy, so they didn't ride their bikes. Um, so actually their dad had dropped them off at school. So that's why she ended up getting a ride home and why, she, cause normally she would have been just riding her bike home and probably sadly she would have been fine, but that's not how it happened. Now she actually got out of school about a half hour earlier than her siblings did and, uh, got a ride with the neighbor. Now the neighbor also had a, um, had a, you know, kid at that school and they knew each other. So it wasn't like, oh, I'm getting in a car with a stranger. It wasn't like that. So she gets out of the car. Oh my God. Is that one of the fish now? Yeah, it's the fish. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I just, I can't get him to be still. He's going to, he, he's going to make the fucking you, shit crash. You're the one, you're the one that was like, what happened to the thing? Now I'm looking for it. No, now. I didn't say what happened to it. I just said, what was that noise? Yeah. I didn't know what that noise was. That's all. Cause okay. I heard something popping right. over there. 
Yeah, popped a little eye out of it. Yeah, that's all. I didn't tell you to, like, fucking run around the room, like, looking for it. Stop managing me. I don't care about it. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Stop. Jesus. Stop I just, managing me. I just didn't know what that noise was. Yeah, but, well, Look, you, we gotta fucking you, go build the, you build this edifice of shit that, like, stemming from something that I didn't even say. I just said, what was that noise? <laughs> Oh, yeah, something popped off your pants. I didn't tell you, oh, go get the flashlight and, like, look around for fucking five hours for it. I don't care about it. Jesus Christ. I just want you to fucking be still so my stream doesn't crash. It's not gonna crash. See how you do? Making making my fucking fish go off back there? Those floppy fish, you guys, I bought the floppy fish for... I bought one for Pookie and one for Beijing. They still make the noise, like they go, eh, 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 eh. but the but the tail doesn't flop anymore because the little uh, hinge in there broke, I guess. He fixed it one time, but then it broke again. Mm. Pookie keeps sitting on them. She just sits on them until they break, until they <laughs> succumb to her will, I guess. <laughs> She's just like, stop moving. But yeah, so, so uh, George's mother comes home is initially not concerned because she's like, oh, you know, the kid's with her dad because the dad had dropped them off at school. So she just assumed, well, he picked them up as well. Uh, however, the dad gets home at 6 p.m. Uh, without the kid, at which point everyone is kind of freaking out. So they ask around the cops uh, and the witnesses reported seeing a dark colored, possibly black four door 1936 Ford sedan with a gray plastic spotlight. They saw it driving around that afternoon. Now, this car disappeared right around the time Georgia did. Deep tire tracks were later found on the road, as if a vehicle had pulled out fast. Uh, the driver of the car, according to witnesses, was a blonde man, quite young, 20 to 25 years old. At least that's what the witnesses said. So this dude was the prime suspect and has never been identified. Um, now, some people said, and this is more than one witness, one witness that said this, but they said that they saw a young girl struggling and pleading with a man inside a similar vehicle in Fort Atkinson, shortly after Georgia vanished. Um, so they don't know if it's the same kid. I'm assuming that it probably is, but a bunch of people did report that as well. Um, now, at first, the authorities thought that probably Georgia, like I said, who was only about seven or eight years old, that she had been kidnapped for ransom. Her dad was uh, quite wealthy and he was also a public official. So that was the first thing they assumed. However, several days passed, the girl did not reappear and there were no ransom demands made either. So there went that theory. So at this point, they're now thinking, well, she must have been taken by a sexual predator. Now, the creepy thing about this is that Georgia, who was only a little girl, and I don't know where she got this idea from, but apparently everybody, like a lot of her friends and family, said that she was terrified of being kidnapped. Like she had a weird, like, a, uh, I don't want to say an irrational fear, because it turned out to be a rational fear because she did get fucking kidnapped. But she was like really, really afraid of it. Like it was something that she talked about a lot. Um, and creepily she did get, it's almost like she had like a weird, like a premonition or something. That's like pretty creepy. So there's this one dude and you just know that this dude is a rapist and murderer, right? Because his name is Buford Senate. Buford Senate. Now he had just, he was a convicted rapist and murderer and he had just started serving a life sentence in prison. Now he ended up confessing to George's murder in the fall of 1947. Now, he said that he and a dude that was with him, but he wouldn't say what the dude's name was. He's like, yeah, we kidnapped her at first for ransom and we were going to do that. But then we gave her some sleeping pills to shut her up and we gave her too much and she overdosed. And that's how that all went. What are you laughing at? <laughs> because you're distracting me. You're I'm distracting sorry, me. What do you want? What they're saying in the comments. Section. What are you saying? <laughs> First of all, Khan's asked me where my Michael Kang wig is. It's in. It's in. Yeah, the it's closet in there. Right there. All right. Uh, in the closet. Yeah, and then fucking Ken said. Ken said the TRT in Jane's outfit had Tom all flustered. And right, it's like I can't. I can't. Like he's like a toddler. He's like no, running around not. everywhere. It's like I'm like sit down, <laughs> eat your vegetables. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Stop all this. Shit. I can't deal with it. Stop all this. Shit. <laughs> No Be an coffee, adult, Tom. It's not the coffee. Be an adult, man. Stop all this shit. Stop it. Well, settle down then. Stop it. Settle down. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I'm talking about people that like horribly I know that. disappeared, I know. I know. and you're like being fucking a show up. I'm yeah, fucking you're fucking. Show. Show. You're just being a fucking. It's clown. alcohol and and all kinds of other stuff. You're being a clown. 
I got, of course, I'm gonna be a clown running around. Look at that cleavage. I'm gonna be a clown around that cleavage. I'm gonna fucking clown around. The only reason I wore this shirt is because this is one of the only shirts that I own that I don't have to pull off over my head. You got your fucking, you got your pretty, you got your pretty hair on. My pretty hair. You got your pretty hair on. Not you, like my regular hair, which is my you, ugly yeah, hair. Yeah, your regular hair. And then you got this. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. See, I knew it. Telling you, man. Where's Tila? Tila isn't <laughs> on the show. She said she just need to have it. Need to have wigs, one for every day. Tom will feel like he's with a new woman every day. See, these black girls fucking know. They know how to manipulate a man's sexuality. See, you know what I'm talking about? Well, it's just. Now I'm looking down here. I'm looking on the fucking show and I'm seeing cleavage. I'm looking there. I'm seeing cleavage. I'm looking over here and I'm seeing cleavage. And then there's like all this fucking testosterone. It's a lot of work. It's all this fucking testosterone happening. She gave me my injection today. It's just starting to kick in. And we're going to go to the club tonight. It's going to be a good night tonight. And she's fucking with me about pulling fucking things out of my fucking bondage pants. What the hell's going on? This shit here, man, has got to fucking stop. How much do we it have does. left? It does. A lot. Yeah, I'm going to stop. Thank you. Tammy stop. says, one word for you, Jenny. Handcuffs. No. <laughs> I'm just wondering where that little thing is. Handcuffs, had. fist cuffs, I'm get, I'm duct getting, tape. I'm just getting kind of... <laughs> I'm just getting kind of like... Tripping out. Like, that, where'd yeah, that thing obviously. go? Yeah, obviously. Where'd that thing go? Obviously. It couldn't have gone anywhere. It went into another dimension. Another fucking dimension. Just stop worrying. All right, go ahead. I've dropped many things in this office that just disappeared, they and I've just, just I've I've just come to terms with the fact that there's a portal to another dimension in this ridiculous. office somewhere. You knock stuff onto the floor, and it's just it's ridiculous. It's, it's never to be found. So, uh, so as I mentioned, this dude said that him and this other guy had kidnapped this little girl for ransom, and that they had accidentally overdosed her when they were giving sleeping pills. Yeah. He said that he threw the little girl's body into the Blue River and they searched the river but did not find her. They did find some ashes in the woods near where his former hideout was and they did forensic testing on these, at least as much as you could do in 1947. Um, because apparently they had one witness say, oh, we saw somebody burning something that looked like a body, but they didn't find anything from that either. So they're not really sure. They don't have any evidence to convict this dude. And then later, this dude came forward and said, nah, I was just joking. Or I didn't really do it. Because you know how these fucking fuckers do. I'm going to confess to all this other kind of shit. Now, this dude, Buford, that's what I'm going to call him. Because that's his name. Come on, still. She's telling me she wants to go out. All right, you can only stay out for like an hour, though, okay? Don't get too, don't get too excited. Just stay on the porch. So Buford gets paroled in 1974. Now, not too long after that, he was arrested again, surprise, for sexual assault to young girls. So 1987, he gets sentenced to 20 years in prison. Uh, so there was a whole like parole violation thing. Now, so he ended up dying in prison in 2008. Now, he was not the only person that confessed to George's kidnapping and murder. There was a whole bunch of other dudes. Like I said, it's it's sad because it's like you never... Yes, you have to check out every single lead because it totally might be legit. And you don't want to leave any stone unturned. But a lot of these dudes just confess to shit because it's kind of in the media. And they think they're going to get attention or they're going to get something out of it. Um, so there were actually a lot of false confessions uh to this particular case nothing could be proven uh on any of them most of them were later recanted anyway now again uh they kind of it's sadly like the case was kind of because they never found her and so it was kind of like forgotten about and then in 1957 when they raided ed gain's place and found all that fucking shit um you know fuck bones and bodies and skin and whatever the fuck um so then they were kind of like well this is also the same area of Wisconsin, so maybe he had something to do with it. But again, they never found any evidence of it. Although it is weird that, like, two young women, although, you know, like I said, one of them was kind of eight. And one of them was, like, a teenager. But it, it does seem strange. It, it doesn't seem like his MO, but I'm not saying that he's not responsible for it. I'm just saying that he's... They haven't ruled him out as a suspect. Even though his... The two victims that they know that he killed, that he was convicted of, or were both middle-aged women. And he was kind of like more of a, I'm going to kill women that remind me of my mom type of dude. More that than, Oedipus complex. More, yeah, more than like, you know, teenager little girls. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All right. So let's move on to the next case because I'm trying to get through all of these 
if someone will cooperate. I'm cooperating. Did you let her out or no? She did the same fucking thing again. She didn't want to go out? all three doors and went no each time. Well, she's, she's not going out then. Because like each door leads to a not different out outside. Fine. It's ridiculous. <laughs> She'll run to the door go, yeah, yeah, yeah. You open it and she's like, nah. Well, like I said, she thinks it's going to be it's, nice out. But it's it's going to be not. a different place. It's going to be a it's different not. temperature. She thinks it's going to be a different temperature every time I open the door. Yeah. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I, I kind of wish that too, but no, yeah. I know that's not going to happen. So let's talk about Ronald Tammond. This is another one from the 1950s. Now, this one's pretty weird, too. So this dude was last seen in Old Fisher Hall, a former Victorian mental asylum, which had been converted into a dorm at Miami University in Oxford, Ohio. This was April 19th, 1953. He was a resident hall advisor at Fisher Hall. He lived in room 225. At 8 o'clock p.m., I thought this was very strange. At 8 o'clock p.m., he requested... New bed sheets because someone had put a dead fish in his bed. Random. Um, I guess it was one of those kind of like frat print, like in the 50s. It's like, hey, let's put dead fish in everything. I, I kind of feel like that was a thing in the 50s. That was like a prank that you did. I don't know. But so somebody put a dead fish in his bed. So we asked for like fresh sheets. Now, sometime around 8.30 p.m., Ronald apparently heard something outside his room that bought, like sounded like I need to check that out. So he goes out of the hallway to see what it was, and he disappeared subsequently. So his roommate comes home at 10 o'clock p.m. and finds that he's gone. Now, the roommate is obviously at first not alarmed because he's like, oh, maybe he went to uh, the Delta Tau Delta fraternity house and stayed there for the night or there was a party or whatever. So he didn't think anything of it. But then when he didn't show up the next day, then he thought it was weird. So then he reported it. Um, now there is no indication that Ronald Tammond left of his own accord. Uh, all of his stuff was found still in his room, clothes, car keys, wallet, identification, watch, high school class ring. All of his shit was still in the dorm room. Uh, he had also left all the lights on in his room, had left the radio on, and there was a psychology textbook open on his desk as if he had been reading it. Now he had a gold 1938 Chevy sedan. Uh, it was still parked in the school parking lot. Uh, his bass fiddle was still in the backseat of the car. $200 in his bank account, which was never accessed. Uh, he probably only had $10 to $15 on his person the night he disappeared, and he was not wearing a coat, even though it was very cold outside. So they have found no... So authorities haven't found any indication either that he left on purpose or that he was murdered. He apparently just went out into the hall to check out what this weird noise was, and vanished off the face of the earth. Um, and the thing about him is that if somebody had jumped on him, they said, you know, obviously if somebody had a gun or a knife or something like that, but this was a big dude. He was like, he was a wrestler. Like he was, he was a big muscular guy. So it's not like, you know, somebody could just come up and like overpower him or whatever, unless they had a weapon. So, you know, they're, they're just saying that. So they think maybe... Maybe he had some kind of mental breakdown. Maybe he developed amnesia. Maybe he fell and hit his head or something like that and wandered off. Now, the weird thing about this is that there was a woman who was living outside of um, Oxford. She was about 12 miles away from the campus. She said that a dude, like a, a college kid, came to her door at 11 p.m. and that same night and asked what town he was in. Hmm. And then he asked for directions to the bus stop. And she told him where the bus stop was. And then he left. Now, there was no bus after this particular time because normally the bus would run at midnight, but they had suspended it for this particular day. So they know that he couldn't have gotten on a bus. This woman said that he looked um, kind of dirty and he was kind of disheveled, said that he was confused and upset. He wasn't wearing a coat or a hat, um, even though it was cold outside. There was, you know, it had been snowing. Uh, he didn't have a car, said it looked like he was on foot. She didn't see a car anywhere. So she said it was kind of weird. Now, she did describe the dude and it did kind of sound like this guy. Um, but they don't know if it was for sure. Like it might have just been a coincidence that this dude like just turned up and asked what town he was in. That seems like a weird question to go to a random house and ask that I was just saying. Now, here's another thing that's weird. Five months before Ronald disappeared... He had gone to the Butler County Coroner's Office in Hamilton, Ohio, and asked for a test to have his blood typed. 
which seems like an odd thing to ask. The coroner said, this is, I've worked here for 35 years and no one has ever come here asking for a test for their blood type. That's mm. So he thought it was very strange and that's why he remembered it. Uh, this was five months to the day before he disappeared. They don't know why he wanted his blood type uh, because they're like, well, he could have just gone to uh, a local doctor or he could have gone to the university hospital, the college he was at. And they would, if they'd asked, he'd asked them if they would have typed his blood for him. Uh, he didn't do that. Now he was supposed to get a physical examination for uh, selective service because he was going into the army. But they were like, well, we don't need to know your blood type before you come in here. So I don't really know why he would be doing that. So apparently, like his parents said that they had last seen him a week before he disappeared. Um, and they said that he'd been acting pretty normal, um, you know, and he didn't seem to be upset about anything. As I said, he was a wrestler. Uh, you know, he was in the band. He was a good student. Um, he had he had been dating. He didn't have a steady girlfriend, but he, you know, dated several different girls at the time. Now, here's something that I saw that was a little bit uh, to me. OK, I'm not saying this is impossible, but it seems a little far fetched. So. This woman, Jennifer Wenger, now she went to the same college as him and she got fascinated by the case many years later. So she started looking into it in 2010 and spent like nine years on it. She was like working on a book or whatever. Now she thinks that Ronald Tammen uh, wasn't murdered or he didn't kill himself or nothing, that he was like alive for a really long time. She thinks that he didn't die until 1995. Now, she thinks this because apparently the FBI threw away his fingerprint records in 2002. So I guess after like seven years after a person dies, they can throw your fingerprints away. Right. Cause it's like, you're dead. You're not, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, now from that, this woman posits that Ronald Tammen's psychology professor was in the CIA and recruited Ronald Tammen into the CIA, which, like I said, that seems like going from one little like, oh, this is kind of weird, way out into the fucking left field. You know what I mean? Yeah. CIA recruit. That just seems a little crazy. That said, uh, I'm not entirely sure what happened to this dude. Now, to this day, um, his parents are both dead now, sadly. But to this day, the... Um, that college is said to be like that area is said to be haunted. Like because Fisher Hall, where he lived, that was torn down in 1978. But prior to that, there were a lot of legends about his ghost like haunting it or whatever. Um, actually, when the Fisher Hall was torn down, they looked for his remains because they thought maybe he just like wandered off and died or whatever, got murdered on the thing, got buried, but they didn't find anything. So again, his parents are dead, but his uh, siblings are still alive and they're still looking out for whatever happened to him going out in the hall to investigate a noise, disappearing. This many years later, nobody knows where the fuck he went, which is pretty creepy. All right, so let's do a couple more cases. Now this case, this one, I, I can't remember. I thought we had talked about this one, but maybe we didn't. This is one that's like actually kind of, because this was like three women that disappeared at one time. Where are you going? Go to the restroom. Oh, okay. No, I'm just wondering. I thought you were just going to wander around in the background again, like looking for shit. Your hands clean? What? Your hands clean? Always. Come hold this. Oh, goodness. You don't need me to do that. <laughs> well, hey, Deborah. Just made it in from work. Jen, love your hair. Thank you. It's a wig. I just bought this wig. We're going to the vampire ball later, so I just wanted to, wanted to try it out. It keeps, like, going in my lipstick, though. It's kind of driving me crazy. All right. So this case, like I said, three women disappeared at the same time. This was Suzanne Streeter, Cheryl Levitt, and Stacey McCall. Now, this happened in Springfield, Missouri in 1992. Suzanne Streeter, she was a, a teenager at the time. Now, she had just graduated from high school, June 6, 1992. Now, this particular night, she, um, you know, the night that she graduated, she had dinner with her uh, mom at home. They lived, as I said, in Springfield, Missouri, on East Delmar Street. Now, Suzanne had a friend named Stacy McCall, and they were going to kind of celebrate their graduation. They were going to spend the night at this hotel in Branson, Missouri. But then they decided, well, no, we're going to go to this other friend's house that was in Battlefield, Missouri instead. I guess they were having like a graduation party there. So they decided to do that instead. 
So Suzanne calls her mom, Cheryl, uh, at about 10.30 p.m. and says, okay, we're changing our plans. We're not staying at the hotel now. Now we're going to this other person's house for a party or whatever. So at this stage, Cheryl, uh, the mom, she calls her friend uh, at about 11.15 that evening. Now she had been home apparently by herself and she was kind of doing some furniture restoration. She was painting a chest of drawers at the time. And during this phone call, it did not appear that there was anything wrong. There were no intruders in the house. She wasn't like alarmed by anything. She was just at home with the dog or whatever. So Suzanne and Stacy, they came back to Cheryl's house. That was uh, Suzanne's mom. They came back at about 2.15 in the morning on June 7th. Uh, they had been at the friend's house and they were like, it was too crowded. They didn't want to stay there. So, cause I guess a lot of people were staying there cause it was graduation parties. And they were like, yeah, we don't want to, we don't want to deal with that shit. So they said, okay, we'll go back to, you know, their mom's house and we're going to go to the Whitewater Amusement Park in Branson later on on that. Uh, I believe it was a Saturday or Sunday. Now, the girls were both had their own car, so they both drove in their separate cars to Cheryl's house. Um, and apparently sometime after the two girls arrived at the house, um, all of them disappeared. The mom the daughter and the daughter's friend all gone. Um, neighbors did not hear any suspicious activity near Cheryl's home during the overnight hours. One of the girls apparently phoned what? Oh, okay. Happened again. <laughs> what now? I walked by the front door and Pookie was fucking sitting by the front door waiting to go out. And I opened the door and she ran out and fucking turned a circle and came right back in. Too hot. <laughs> Well, she's just going to stay in then. Because... Yeah, she's going to be staying in tonight because fuck that. Because she's not going outside when we're not here. Man, I'm ready for the club tonight. Well, it's we still have a little bit. I'm ready for the club Like, just tonight. let me. It's only 7.30. Yeah. He's going to be, like, hard to deal with this evening. No, I'm not going to be hard to deal with. Yeah, you are. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. All my boys will be there. They'll keep me out of control. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. You think so? like, we're going to the restaurant today. or they well i yeah that'll be this so I, I haven't eaten hardly good. anything today just yeah, in, in preparation fried. yeah because i knew we'd be going to chantelle that i'm gonna get some fucking fried catfish and hang out with big tom <laughs> and will who else is coming i'm not sure actually well dimitri and jen will be there okay, because good. uh dimitri's djing yeah so laura coming I think not. All right. Uh, she just messaged me a couple days ago. Yeah. It's like, yeah, probably not. We showed y'all Laura. The yeah. Wonder Woman. <laughs> um, who else coming? I don't know yet. Okay. Grandther says mm, fried catfish. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's good. Yeah, we had some edges. Yeah. What you told them? Yeah, last time we, we went had out. We had fried catfish. Yeah, fried catfish. Yeah. yeah. And french fries. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, all their shit. They have two different kinds of fish. You can get fish and yeah. chips. That's but good soul food. The, yeah, catfish is good. Soul food and karaoke. There's, they have a ton so, of other shit on the menu. We're going to record the, the shit. We'll post it. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Depends on how we drop if, it. If out. I'm sober enough. Yeah. We're going to record the shit. We'll put it Because I up. might just be like, where are the buttons? Fuck this. We'll put it on the channel. Because <laughs> I get super impatient when I'm drunk, too. Okay, I'm just, I don't want to fuck with anything. I mean, I'm, I'm impatient when I'm sober, too, but I'm just saying. Um, yeah. So, so basically, so all of these three women, like I said, the mom, the daughter, and the daughter's friend all disappeared on this one particular night. Um, so they weren't reported missing until later that evening, June 7th, which was like the day after, you know what I mean? Cause one friend was like calling around being like, where the fuck are they? And they couldn't find them. So the cops go in the house, all of their shit was still in the house. Uh, the, all their cars were still there, still parked at the house. Nothing unusual there. Um, Cheryl's bed appeared to have been slept in during the previous night, just like normal. Uh, her eyeglasses next to the bed, there was a book like turned over, like she'd been reading it. And as, as though someone had come in and maybe interrupted her while she was in the middle of reading. The family also had a little Yorkshire terrier named Cinnamon. And he was still inside the house and appeared to be anxious. So, as I said, none of their belongings were touched. Uh, TV was on. No sign of a struggle. The only weird thing at the house was that the porch light outside had been broken. There was like broken glass all over. Um, but they didn't find any other physical evidence at the scene. So the shitty thing is that because the porch light was the only thing unusual and no one really related it to the disappearance at the time, like I guess a friend of the family had kind of like swept the glass because the glass was on the porch. So they kind of swept the glass into the garbage without really thinking about it. 
So they didn't have that as evidence, but that was the only weird thing. Um, but yeah, so all of their, every, all of their shit was there. The purses, cigarettes, everything. Um, the only thing, another thing weird, the three women's purses were next, all next to each other on the stairs. The blinds in Suzanne's room were pulled apart as if someone had been looking outside through them. Um, sadly, like I said, because they let so many people into the crime scene, this is early nineties. Um, and when your family members come over and they're like looking for you and stuff, they kind of let a, a bunch of people just like tramp through the house without worrying about, you know, the crime scene being contaminated or whatever. <clears throat> um, and they didn't really know what was going on until much later. So Deborah said your hair looks great. Yeah. I saw that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. I told her earlier I was a wig. Okay. You weren't in here when, oh, yeah, when okay. I said it. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So the police officers, what they did at first was they just left a note on the door and said, hey, Cheryl, if you come back, if you haven't been kidnapped, uh, call the cops and cancel the missing persons reports because, you know, you guys have all been reported missing and we're sure it's fine. Um, you know, so they start looking around. They did like this big, huge search of the surrounding areas and they found nothing. Um, one suspect that they identified early on was this dude named Robert Cox, who was a robber. Now, he was serving time on unrelated charges in a Texas prison. Uh, he had actually also been convicted of a murder in Florida, but his conviction was uh, overturned. Now, he actually did live in the area at the time of the women's disappearances, and he had worked with Stacy's father at a local car dealership. Um, and he initially lied to investigators, saying that he wasn't in Springfield on June the 7th when the women disappeared, but later recanted the statement and went back and go, oh, you know what, uh, maybe I was. Now, he also later told the journalist that he knew that all three women had been murdered and that they'd all been buried near Cheryl's house, but he said they their remains will never be found. So at this point, police are like, they haven't found any bodies. They haven't found any other evidence. They haven't found anything, any physical evidence linking this dude to these crimes. So they're not really sure if he actually did know what was going on or if he was just blowing smoke like to get attention or whatever or to get, you know, perks. So they're not really sure because, like I said, they don't really have anything to go on. Now, they did have a witness. The This witness said that they saw a woman matching Suzanne's description, who was the daughter, uh, driving an older model moss green Dodge van later during the day on June 7th, which, like I said, was after they disappeared. Uh, this witness said that the young woman uh, looked really scared. And there was a uh, male voice, which the witness didn't see the dude, but heard the voice saying, don't do anything stupid. Now, the witness didn't think anything about this at the time, but after the disappearance was reported, they actually reported it to the police. Now, other witnesses actually did come forward and said that they'd seen the same Dodge van, this kind of green one, uh, driving around various areas of Springfield, Ohio, after the women's uh, disappearances. Uh, and a man also told authorities that he saw the blonde female sitting in the driver's seat of a similar vehicle in the parking lot of a grocery store. And he said that he'd written the van's uh, license plate number down because he thought that the vehicle looked suspicious. However, for whatever reason, he actually threw the piece of paper that he'd written it down on away uh, before he reported it. So when they brought the dude in later, they hypnotized him and he was actually able to remember the first three digits of the uh you know of the license plate but that was all that he remembered and i guess they couldn't find anything about it now there was a woman who worked at george's steakhouse uh this was one of cheryl's favorite restaurants in the springfield area now she said that she had seen all three women in the establishment between 1 and 3 a.m on june 7th which like i said was after they had disappeared from the house now this employee said that all three women arrived and departed together uh, also said that Suzanne, the daughter, uh, appeared to be intoxicated as the group left the restaurant and that the mom, Cheryl, was attempting to calm her down. Uh, but this sighting has never been uh, confirmed. And so they don't know. Hey, Pookie. Yeah. She, look yeah. it. Oh, look she, it. Oh, she's like, fuck that. She's being worse than me. She, she is, yeah. She's being worse than me. She's she not worse than you. Me, she's an angel. She's being runs. Pookie's an angel. She wants, she's trying to get me out of here. She wants to play. She's well, like, we're stop all... working. Let's play. That's what she's saying. <laughs> well, I know. But like I, I said, I'm, try I'm trying to get through the shit. 
and you just keep like no i'm not i'm not going off no, on not different doing, no, tangents no, no, well you well no. the thing about it too is that you're not even like contributing anything no 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 like, right now not right now no. yeah because you're yeah. you can't be that drunk no i'm just i'm just distracted <laughs> i guess so. i'm distracted yeah Oh my God, get your shit together. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. You think? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they don't know if, if this sighting was actually legit or not. But like yeah. I said, this server had actually seen them before because this was uh, one of the restaurants that they that these three women went to. Um, some other witnesses said they heard women screams and the squeal of tires in eastern Greene County, Missouri during the early hours of June 7th. Uh, but again, they there was a search and nothing was found. A composite sketch of an unidentified transient man was released in the days after the disappearances. This dude was allegedly seen by witnesses near Cheryl and Suzanne's residence in early June of 1992. So they don't know if he was like stalking them or what. Uh, they don't know if he was involved in the case. Um, but they did rule out, you know, because usually in cases like this, they're like, oh, ex-boyfriends or, you know, other male relatives. So uh, apparently all of those people have been ruled out. Now, another, this is kind of sad. So this was on, this case was featured on America's Most Wanted. And I think I saw it too, because I kind of remember this case. This has been on a couple of like uh, disappearances shows because it's kind of unusual for three women to disappear at once from a house. You know what I'm saying? Thank you, Victor. Get your shit together, LOL. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, $5 for, for you to get your shit together. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm together. Are you? Yeah. Okay. Man, <laughs> I got a lot on my mind. Don't even, <laughs> don't even start I got a lot that. on my mind right now. I just, I just, cats, he, has a, he has a lot on his mind. It's like this yeah, much. Look, I have a lot on my mind. It's like this much. Look at her fuck with me. It's like this much. All right. Deal okay. with it. All right. Deal with it. Okay. No, I'm, no, I'm doing good. Okay. You sure? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so this case was on America's Most Wanted, right? If you guys remember that show. This was back in 1992, like not too long after it happened. So this anonymous caller calls into the show and says that he has like all this information about it. And they were like super excited. But for whatever reason, he either hung up or he got disconnected before they could talk to him. And he never called back. So I don't know if this dude was just like pranking or I don't know what the fuck happened. But he never like contacted them again. So so this is the thing what they think happened um and this is just speculation they think that maybe uh one of the uh assailant or assailants might have been more than one person because like i said it was three women so you would think one dude i don't know maybe he was armed or whatever they think what he did was that since the little uh the little dog cinnamon was maybe out in the yard like in the fence they think that this dude kind of snuck in the yard, picked up the dog, and then came up to the door. Thank you, David. <laughs> Have fun tonight, Tom, and he's laughing. Yeah, thanks, man. Picked up the dog and then came to the door and was like, oh my God, I found your dog like wandering around the neighborhood. They think that is maybe what happened because the dog seemed like super freaked out, right? And he was just like, what the fuck is going on? So they're speculating that this dude, that's how he got them to open the door, right? That he came up with the dog. Um, So they kind of looked into you know, the women's backgrounds, because they always do that in this situation. Uh, Cheryl, the mom, she had actually just moved to Springfield in 1980. She was originally from Seattle. Now, she had divorced her first husband, who's Brent Streeter. They actually did look into his background uh, as well. This was shortly after Suzanne was born. Um, the weird thing about them is that they divorced, but then they kept living together because she wanted to get welfare, I guess. Yeah, you know, and yeah. if they were married, she wouldn't get as much. So just like, oh, well, we'll still live together, but we'll not be married because I'll get more money that way. Thank you, Victor. Have some money, Tom. <laughs> oh, <more> money? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Vic. So, well, that David was... David said I'm sending you all a movie. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, cool. All right. I'm excited. All right. I like movies. All right. I like movies. Send you us like the movie, movie, we'll review it. I like money. You like money? Yeah. yeah. Make sure we... I don't already have it, though. Well, I don't know. Okay, well, I'm just telling him that. Make sure I don't already have the movie. I got a huge catalog. He does, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so 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 the husband said that, hey, why don't we live together and then we'll get divorced so you can get welfare. And she was like, nah, fuck that. So she uh, took off and lived in an apartment complex. And she actually lived there for free because she did, she lived there as like an apartment manager. Like she did repairs around the apartment complex, like in exchange for free rent. That's what she, that's what she did um, after her uh, daughter was born. So the daughter didn't actually know the dad, know the dad because they separated before. 
Now, they actually moved into this house where they were kidnapped from like two months before they disappeared. Uh, Cheryl had also had a second husband named Don Levitt, uh, and they divorced in 1989. Now, this dude, I guess he took off and disappeared also like on purpose. And so he kind of saddled Cheryl with all his debts because the debt collectors couldn't find him. So they're like, hey, you're the wife, you're on the hook. So she was kind of pissed about that. So I'm just saying. Now, Suzanne, the daughter, she worked at a movie theater in 1992. She was going to enroll in cosmetology school. Uh, she also had some learning disabilities. They think she was maybe dyslexic. Um, so they were actually, Cheryl and Suzanne, uh, you know, the, they don't really talk about the Stacy McCall, who was just like a friend. But like I said, she disappeared too. Um, but they actually, Cheryl and Suzanne, I don't know about uh, Stacy, but they were declared legally dead in 1997, which is only five years after their disappearance. I guess their relatives did that. Uh, but as, uh, as of 2021, nobody knows where any of these three women went to. Like I said, no sign of a struggle in the house. Obviously, they didn't go anywhere on purpose because all their cars and all their shit was still there. They just vanished off the face of the earth and have never been found. So let's talk about, we're going to talk about one more case, okay? You, can you handle that? Yeah, what's weird is that you got a comment from Victor Garcia there, and I didn't get it. Yeah, y'all need kind to do a matinee on border. Kind of it's like a, it was kind of like I accidentally made Victor Garcia invisible to me somehow. Or you why. have the swearing filter on. Yeah, I don't know why that would be. I don't have that on. I don't have no filters on, man. Oh, okay, yeah, top chat. Some, things that are potential spam may not be visible. Okay, so you just go to live chat. Yeah, see, there you yeah, go. Yeah, and then Victor Garcia appeared. Okay, good. Problem solved. Yeah. Did you think it was like some kind of conspiracy? I didn't know. Or yeah, it's conspiracy. <laughs> yeah. No, I, just, I thought maybe I had somehow accidentally blocked him or something. Nope. Okay. Like I said, it's usually, it's just because yeah. it's usually like swearing and you just yeah. have, it's, it's usually your settings. It's yeah, like I didn't see that setting option there. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Okay. All right, so the last case I want to talk about, because we're already at three hours, we're good. Okay. And like I said, well, and then I still have time. It's see, it's not even eight o'clock yet. All right. So then I'll have time I'm to. I'm like... hungry though. Are you? Yeah, I'm getting hungry. Well, what are you gonna eat? You're gonna eat before we go. Maybe like a little snack. We'll see. I'm not gonna eat anything okay. before I go. All right. So the last one I'm gonna talk about is Logan, and please, I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Scheindelman, Scheindelman, something. Okay. Now on this particular day, this this is actually quite recent. This happened in 2016. So this teenage guy, he tells his grandma, who he lived with, um, that I had an epiphany about myself. Now his grandmother says to him, it's like, this is kind of sad. The grandmother's like, yeah, we'll talk about that later. And they never actually did get a chance to talk about it because Logan disappeared the next day. So uh, he was last seen May 19th, 2016 in Tumwater, Washington, and has not been heard from since. So he was raised by his maternal grandmother. Uh, he was a football player at Tumwater High School. After graduation, he completed his freshman year at Washington State University, which was 300 miles from home. Then he dropped out and moved back to live with his grandmother and half-sister. Um, and while he was there, he worked multiple jobs, one of which was at his great aunt's five-acre farm. Now, his family, I guess they said, like, prior to his disappearance, he was going through, I think what one of them called an identity crisis. I guess because... He was, um, he's mixed race. Uh, his dad was Saudi Arabian, I think. And then like his mom was half white, half black. He was raised by his grandmother who was white. So I guess he was having, I don't know. They, they said that he was maybe having some issues about, you know, identity or whatever. Now he was, um, described as he's, he was a really good student. He was a quiet dude. Like I said, he was very, um, you know, active in sports or whatever. But after he went off to college, he kind of got, uh, withdrawn they said that uh, he had had some friends in high school, but that he didn't really talk to him, talk, talk to them after he went off uh, to college. Thank you, David. Appreciate the Friday show, despite you having plans. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, we, you know, it's we, gonna be a full show. we got to work around. We got to yeah, work yeah. around. Like I said, we're already at three hours. I, well, yeah. well, that's why I wanted to start a little bit earlier. So yeah. I didn't feel like I was like rushing through the shit. Um, You're looking gorgeous with your hair. With your pretty hair. My pretty hair, yeah, yeah, as opposed to my ugly hair. As opposed to your ugly hair. <laughs> hey, man, we gotta play games. We're trying to make a show. You look good. I'm just looking at the damn screen there. You look good in there. Well, yeah, thank I you. Like it's like when I have my other outfit on. Like I said, this yeah. isn't the shirt I'm gonna wear. This is just yeah, the I one I wore because. All right. And these aren't the pants I'm gonna. These I'm just wearing yoga right. pants too. I'm just wearing yoga yeah. pants because they're comfortable. 
Um, but yeah, so he didn't really, so he had kind of like not talked to his high school friends anymore and he didn't really seem to make any friends when he went to college either. And it seems like he didn't really know his dad because I guess like his dad like sort of knocked up his mom. Like his dad was on a business trip and he was just like, you know, out of town and he knocked up the mom and there's just like, bye, good luck with that. You know what I mean? So it was just kind of that kind of situation. So he did actually kind of reach out to his dad's side of the family later and they kind of like got together. But it was, you know, I guess it was a little bit of a strained uh, relationship. Now, his grandma said that around the time he went missing, he had started uh, smoking some of the weed, some of the Mary Jane, you know, although I don't think that really had anything to do with it. Um, apparently also there was some tension between Logan and his half sister's boyfriend, uh, who had actually recently moved into the house with all of them. And Logan really did not like him. So, uh, the boyfriend was actually the first suspect in the disappearance that maybe he'd done something to him, but, uh, he said he didn't know anything about it. He passed a polygraph. There was no evidence or anything like that. So I guess he was dismissed as a suspect. Now, as I said, the grandmother was like, uh, Logan did appear nervous before he disappeared um, and had said something about, oh, I had an epiphany about myself. And she's like, yeah, we'll talk about that later. But then they never really got a chance to because then he vanished. So the next day, um, this is really weird. So she doesn't, so the grandma doesn't know where Logan is, right? And she's like, okay, well, I'm going to start tracking him by the pings on his cell phone like you would because it's 2016. So the phone pings off a tower that was near his mom's house in Olympia, Washington. So the grandmother thought, oh, well, maybe he just like took off and went to his mother's house. That's not that weird. So then, though, she starts watching the other pings. And then so the phone started going. He went down the uh, to, down Interstate 5. He was going south. And then he turns around and goes back north again. And then he goes back south again. And then he goes. So it's almost like he was driving back and forth along this same stretch of highway just like over and over again and they're not really sure what at least his cell phone was uh ken says thank oh thank you very much ken i'm digging the hair too in the dirty pillows <laughs> that was a carry you can see your dirty yeah, pillows. Dirty, you can see your dirty pillows they're called breasts and yeah <laughs> that's breast fucking funny <laughs> i keep confusing that they're called breast mama with like i said the young ones but they're called breasts and everyone has them yeah yeah you know what i mean um you know what i mean <laughs> that's funny so, yeah, so so the cell phone was pinging as though he was driving up and down the same stretch of highway, like north, south, north, south, north, south. You know what I mean? So that seemed a little weird. Now, the same day, um, this was the morning of May 20th, 2016. So this woman, she's driving to work and she says she sees somebody that looks like Logan with two unknown white dudes and they're standing by his car. This car, um, like I said, was Logan's and it was parked on the right shoulder of the southbound Interstate 5 near exit 95. Now, she kind of saw him and she thought it was weird because it's like three dudes standing by the car, like on the side of the highway. Thank you again, Victor. I like you for your brain and breasts. <laughs> well, that's all anyone can ask for, that's isn't fun. it? <laughs> they're, they're begging for a photo shoot. They're begging for a photo Oh my shoot. goodness. Well, we got know. some older ones. I do. Yeah. I haven't done a photo shoot in a long time. Not in a while, yeah. We needed to do one for the cookbook yeah. so I can get that finished because yeah. it's, it's done other than that. They want a boob centric photo shoot. Remember the one where I did to you? You're like this, and you had a fucking cool headdress on, the fucking jacket. And it was nothing but just fucking cleavage for fucking days. <laughs> I used that as a banner for a while. Do you still have that photo? That I'm photo? sure I do. I don't. I don't yeah. usually throw shit like that away. Yeah. Which there was a way to post in the fucking comment section. Yeah, uh, he's getting all like fucking. Yeah, I fucking. I gotta figure out how to use this shit better. All the. <laughs> All the blood is rushing from his brain into his nether region. Hey, listen to these bitches. Well, what? That's what happened. Okay. It's, bi right. it's biology. Right. It's biology. But yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. So she I like thought, how you use that as biology. Well, you, that's what you yeah. say all the time. So well, of I'm course. Just, that's my excuse. That's what I'm saying. So I'm yeah. just like, you know, pinging it back at you. I think I got it here, though. Go ahead and go ahead and do the show. I'll find that fucking picture. And then you'll like interrupt me again. I'll pull that picture and I'll fucking show it on the camera. Okay. Yeah. I don't even... I'm not... I think I know what picture you're talking yep. about, but I'm I not entirely it. sure. Oh, uh, you got it, so I shouldn't yeah. start talking is what you're saying? No, here. First, I'm going to start simple. You're going to start simple? Yeah. Okay, Remember here this? we go. Victor says, I'm mostly into dudes, but who doesn't like boobs? Oh, yeah, that's it. Oh, I remember. Uh, you didn't take those. No, no, no. They, Tony they took take those. This one. Tony took those. Yeah. That's yeah. actually, that's his guitar, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I did a whole I did a whole photo shoot yeah. that day because he's a photographer and he wanted yeah. some shit for his uh, portfolio. Yeah, I always like that picture. Yeah, good picture. 
Okay, I know you guys want to see the cleavage. <laughs> Come on, focus. We got to put these up in the damn stream one of the days. Yeah, they're kind of old, but they're I know. old, but that's several years old. You still pretty much look like that. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not yeah. that much. Now you messed up my lighting again. Now it's yeah. too bright in here. Look what you did. I used that picture on my uh, writing ship for a yeah. long time. Let me show you guys. <laughs> Hold on. Where's the face? You I still like, have that headdress, too. Yeah, you look like Betty Page in that one. With my buns. Kind of. There we go. I made that headdress, actually. Yeah. yeah. Got a couple more I'm going to show them. Okay. Uh, oh, I remember this one. This is a cute one. Look at, look at this, man. That's sick. Yeah, I like that. A lot of people like that one, because I was actually smiling in that one. <laughs> Although I don't think anyone's looking at it smiling. <laughs> there we go. Focus. <laughs> it won't focus. There you go. One sure. more. You sure? One more. Okay. <sighs> yep. That's it, guys. I remember that. I remember that. That's day. the deal. I remember that day. Yeah. I love those shoes. I think those shoes broke. I can't wear them anymore. They kept yeah. like, I remember in that shoot, they kept like, the spikes kept stabbing me in the head. Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy, did, Jimmy did some semi nude ones too for, for Special Forces. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I forgot about that. Special Forces guys I knew, the guy I knew, fucking, yeah, I'm not saying he did that. real good photography. And he's like, he had a good portfolio. He'd get hotties and fucking take them and fucking kind of Special Forces them up and make fucking. We gotta like hold AK forty seven. Yeah, AK forty seven. He never some real <laughs> Mac tens with suppressed. Yeah. And then he put uh, him in like he put him in like post apocalyptic post -apocalyptic, backgrounds yeah. and whatnot. Some of them were on playing cards. Remember that? Yeah, I remember. Some of them were on playing cards. Victor said, "Is that an Anubis tattoo?" It is, indeed. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it was. He was um, fifth group, and fucking all that shit ended up in special forces. I was like, "Yeah, for SF, I'll do it." If Thank you, DC, you. because yeah. Tom planted that flag in his own words. <laughs> <laughs> guys are fucking hilarious. Oh, my God. Yeah. Look at what we're doing here. You guys are hilarious. You're killing me. Yeah. You're killing me. Webcam. No, I don't want to focus. YouTube will demonetize us. Maybe. It was a, there's no nipple. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. Nothing wrong with a little cleavage. <laughs> you know. Now they're talking about you. All right. Yeah. DC said it was not planned. I can't believe you fucked up my mood lighting. We talking about did, did, look did, what you did. did, did, did it, it, it all like brightened up. Well, I don't. Happened? I don't like it. I like what when happens? I like when it's darker. Okay. You messed it up. <laughs> all right. Can I? This is seriously. This is the last. This case. is the last Can part I of the please, case. Yeah. We gotta get this shit done. Please get back to this. Yeah, we gotta get this shit done. You're just like you're like a squirrel. You're always just kind of like, oh, look at yeah. over, look over there, look over there. He does. He has ADHD. Yeah. No, I don't. You do kind of. Not normally. <laughs> Not normally. Not normally. It's age. Age and drugs. And hormones. <laughs> age and drugs and... High performance hormones. You got, performance you got all kind of problems. Yeah. All right. So, like I said, so this woman is driving to work and she sees the car at the side of the road. She sees a dude that looks like Logan. Like I said, she didn't know who it was at the time, obviously. But later, after he disappeared, she knew who it was. And she thought it was weird because he was there and there was two other dudes. And they... I don't know. It just looked unusual. Now... When she was driving home from work later that day, she saw the same car uh, still parked in the same spot, but this time the hood was up and she didn't see any of the dudes around. So they asked her, they're like, well, what did the dudes look like that were with Logan? She said one of them was about six feet tall, uh, very scrawny, thin, straight blonde hair and a bowl cut, which, okay. Uh, she said that he was wearing clothes that were like too small for him. She said he had a tank top on and it was too small and the jeans that he was wearing were too short. The second man, uh, she said he was, he had shoulder length blonde hair. Uh, he was wearing a flannel shirt and jeans. Um, but she said she didn't get a look, good look at the second guy. She said she only saw him from the side, but she could tell he was a Caucasian dude and could just see his clothes. Now, 2 p.m. later that same day, three different people called 911 to report a car that was drifting across multiple lanes of Interstate 90, of Interstate 5 between Tumwater and Maytown. Now, this car, um, apparently there was no one driving it. 
Uh, it was just an empty car and it was drifting across all the lanes of the highway. So it veers across three lanes toward the center lane and hit the concrete barrier and came to a stop. I don't think anyone else was injured. Now, another person who was a truck driver said they saw a white dude with either red hair or brown hair jumping out of the passenger side of the car and running toward the woods right by the interstate. Now, this person, they're not entirely sure who this was because this person does not match the description either of Logan or of the two dudes that the woman saw earlier. So they don't know who this dude is. But the car that was crashed was a 1996 Chrysler Sebring convertible. Uh, with Washington license plate number AVJ8434. Uh, and this was registered to Logan. So that was Logan's car. Um, they just don't know who was driving it. Well, no one was driving it. It was just like going across the fucking thing. But they saw somebody jump out of it, but they don't know who that was because that person didn't match any of the descriptions. Now, all of Logan's shit, his wallet, ID, debit card, $25 in cash, cell phone, car keys, a water bottle... Um, and a big grocery snack, uh, stack that was filled with, uh, food, like snacks and stuff, still was all found in the car. So everything was found in his car and it was his car. So they started doing a search. Uh, they did a two mile radius of the woods around the spot where the car was found. They brought in the tracking dogs, helicopters, everything. They found, uh, no sign of Logan. Now, a week after he disappeared, someone at the Olympia Regional Airport checked in at the airport on his Facebook page. Uh, but this, uh, turned out that this post was actually celebrating an airport check-in from a year before. So I don't really know who did that or what that was about. Now, his family have no idea what the fuck was going on with this shit. They don't know what the deal was with him telling his grandma I had an epiph epiphany about myself. They don't know why he would leave without saying where he was going. He didn't take any of his stuff. Like I said, all the shit with the car and like the car just going across the fucking highway or whatever. Um, the cops were like, well, we haven't found any evidence of foul play, but they we haven't found any evidence that the dude is still alive either. So they're not really sure what the fuck is going on. So uh, as of now, uh, the case is still unresolved. Now, in 2019, I believe there was a TV show called Disappeared, and they also covered his case in an episode. Now, as of this, he was 19 when he disappeared, so he would be, you know, 22, 23 years old now. Uh, as I said, he's a biracial African-American Caucasian, a male with black hair and brown eyes, six feet tall, between 150 and 190 pounds, with a shaved head and a small scar on his left forearm. Uh, and they have... Uh, also, they said that he um, was really, really he had a, a really severe peanut allerg allergy, uh, which meant that he should have had an EpiPen on him. But as far as they could determine, he did not have one on him that day. So something bad might have happened there because he didn't have his medical shit. So, again, a very mysterious case from 2016. There's his family is still looking for him. And that's this one is fairly recent. And. This one kind of more seems like, I don't know, the, the fact that he was seen with those two dudes, that's kind of sketchy, but it did seem like he was having some problems prior to that. So maybe he did like some weird shit and just decided to disappear. I don't really know. Hmm. But if he's fucking out there, his family's still fucking looking for him. So, hmm. you know, there you go. Oh, runs here. Victor you. says they solved this case. It turns out it was Meryl Street prepping for a role for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing, Pokey? Alrighty. No. No. She's looking at me like, what are you talking about? What's the matter, Pokey? She's, She's trying to get into go, my closet. I want to go into the other closet. She wants to go in the closet because, again, I think she thinks that it, might go outside. that it goes outside or that it's another. There's seriously nothing in. Well, didn't you say to keep that cl closed because my backpack is in there yeah, that has the water thing on it and she'll just, chew on it? She'll just let her see it. Okay, I'm just saying. That was the whole reason. I think she's you... trying to go to another outside. That was the whole reason a that you put the backpack in there. Because... trying to go for a parallel universe outside. Yeah, like I said, it's like Kitty Narnia. Look, well, it's just kind of like how Beijing, like, she wants to get into the dishwasher. Every time I open the dishwasher to empty it, she's like, why can't I get in the dishwasher? I don't understand why you won't let me get in the dishwasher. She thinks it goes somewhere cool. I guess it doesn't go anywhere cool. It doesn't go anywhere cool. I promise. Yeah. It goes the same place that it went last time you yeah. went in there, which was yesterday. She's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. It's yeah. you know what I mean. But so, yeah. So what? So do you guys have any questions about the cases? You know what we got to do. At least I got all of them through. Yes, you got all, all of them through. Yeah. Oh my god. It was a good show. <laughs> 
I feel really bad, like I said, because like all these people are still fucking missing, and then yeah, we're just like clowning, like talking about a bunch of bullshit. Well, it's nothing we can do about it. <laughs> That's true. You know, I think each each case was a you know, and then of course you know it sounds it's gonna sound stupid when I say this shit. It's it probably age, is. I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> each one of these cases is an individual case. Something different happened to each one of them. It's just some weird shit that happens. Well, and I kind of feel like, too, even if we're clowning, I do kind of feel like when you mention the people's names, it's like you never know. You never know what it is that somebody's if maybe somebody might come across the show and be like, hey, I saw that dude or hey, I know something about that dude or whatever. You never know. So it's it. Bringing it up is always like good. Same with any like unsolved. It's case. easy to be mystified when you weren't there. If you saw the shit. Well, yeah, that's down. why people are mystified. Yeah. You saw the shit go down. It wasn't anything special. Thank something. you, Jay Peacher. What he love say? you guys. Love you too, bitch. We love you too. Love you. He too. calls everyone bitch. Don't yeah, take b- it. Dirty. Bitch is a term of endearment. <laughs> to a power top, bitch is a good thing. <laughs> Just call you bitch. Yeah, we'll see a power top. Yeah, you got. You know, I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give y'all a fucking choker necklace, and it has a little pendant, and it, it, diamond studded gold. It just says bitch. So you know what I mean. It's like a title. You want to hear something funny? In the seventies, my mom yeah. used to. Uh, she had she had this uh, shirt. It was like a tank top. Yeah. And it had. You remember back in the seventies when they had those uh, iron ons that were like yeah. iridescent, real fucking tacky, that said <laughs> "sexy bitch" on it. Yeah, it said "sexy bitch." Yeah. yeah in the seventies, yeah, my mom was a sexy it's bitch in the seventies. You know, you know what's really funny? You know the pictures that you took or that you took of me at mannequins with Jen. Yeah. With that red wig on. Yeah. And those pic, I really like how those pictures came out. But I was looking, I was like, oh my god, I look just like my mom when she was really? younger. Okay. Yeah. Like I look like my mom looked back in the seventies, except with okay. different color hair. I can obviously. Believe it. Yeah. I was just I I never really realized how much I looked like my mom <clears throat> before then. Well, because I always had bangs and she never had bangs. You got to show pictures of your mom. I don't know if I have I have yeah. some I have some on my Facebook I think. Well, like, mom wars. So I'll show like when I was a kid. Then I'll show pictures of my mom. My mom's super cute. Fuck off. Yeah, yeah. You know my mom. My mom's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my mom's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I like your mom. Your mom's cool. Yeah, she's super cool. Yeah, she's, she's, a good she's, a, she's a sweetheart. She's she's a uh, upbeat. Yeah. Very positive. Well, that's what I always liked about her. Yeah. She's real, she's real like, she's kind of chill, you know? Yeah. She's just kind of like, yeah, that's how she goes, you know? And, you know, it's funny because she, she had me when she was very, very, very young. She was only 18. She was only like, it. she had me in September. She had just graduated from high school, like the yeah. previous June or whatever. Um, And so she would always tell me, she's like, she's like, I'm so glad you turned out okay because I had no fucking idea what I was doing. <laughs> she's like, I was also a child and uh, suddenly I was, I, I, you know, she had me on purpose. It wasn't an accident, but I was, she was just kind of like, I just had no idea what I'm doing, what I was doing. And I'm just like, so glad you guys, cause I have three siblings too. And she's like, I'm so glad you guys all turned out normal. <laughs> well, you know, normal, that's a relative term, but just, you know, not drug addicts or serial killers or whatever. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, we may look, we may look like weirdos, but we're we're all right. Yeah. We're all right. We're nice people. <laughs> Louie just got here. Louis now I now here. I feel really what bad. Fuck? Dude, you're at the end of the show, man. Show's over, bro. Because it's like, yeah, yeah, we gotta we gotta show go in a little bit. Over. I gotta Although, put some clothes on. As soon as she turns it off, it'll just restart so you can watch it again. It won't be it won't be live, but yeah. It was a good show. Good cool shit happened. It was funny. Cool shit happened. Yeah. It's funny. Yeah, I gotta go put some different clothes yeah. on and yeah, we actually put my go. put my nails on. Yeah, actually, we gotta go because I can't get dressed with those nails. We gotta on be there in an snap hour. off. We but like I said, we don't have to be there like right when it opens. But like because right. it's not that far away, it only takes us like ten minutes. To yeah, drive but there, I want to but... get something to eat and everything too. Okay, well you can sure. eat something. I'm just gonna yeah. eat like a fucking. I think I... well I got some leftover spaghetti sitting in there. I'm not gonna eat that. It's gonna All mess. Right. That's gonna mess my shit up. All right. All right. So uh, is, uh, Terrence Williams open? No, we haven't done that yet. That'll be on the next one though. Let me write it down. Terrence Williams. All right. I'm going to write that down. We'll, Victor do, we'll asking, do that in the next one. Victor's asking us to watch um, Border. Yeah, I know. I saw that. Okay. We got to yeah. watch that. We um, probably on Sunday, we'll either talk about the next episode of Creep Show or I watched that uh, four episode thing on Netflix about the Isabella Gardner Museum heist. Yeah. I've, was, I've always been fascinated by that. It was kind of interesting. 
Yeah, well, like you I said, liked I liked it more than I did. Yeah, yeah, I read a book about it, so I was like really into yeah. it. It probably could have been shorter, to be yeah. honest. It probably could have just been. They stretched it out. Well, they do that with a lot of those Netflix yeah. things. It's like you really could have done that like in a two-hour documentary. It didn't really need to be four hours long, but you know, I'm not gonna like shit on it too much. There's just like a lot of repeated stuff, but you know, I I, I I'm really into like heists in general and art heists in particular. Um, so I thought it was interesting. So just saying, we might talk about that too. Maybe we can talk about that Monday or Tuesday, whatever. But yeah, so thank you everybody for dropping by. We are going to go out and drink even more. Yeah. Hang out with some people, pretend to be vampires. Oh my God, my fucking, look at that. Okay. Your device ran into a problem and needs to restart. Well, okay. Okay. Restart then. It's not on me, is it? Um. Yeah, so we'll see you guys on Sunday for the matinee show because we're not going to stream tomorrow. Although I am going to uh, put up a movie review that i did of flickers of fear tomorrow and uh so again thanks everybody for dropping by thanks for everybody that donated you guys are awesome and we love you guys we'll see you on sunday you gonna say anything tom bye bye bye